What's up, everybody? Welcome to We Have Cool Friends, the cool show where we interview our cool friends about the cool things they're doing. I'm Greg, that's Nick, and that's our cool friend, Josh McCuga. Hey, guys. Now, I know what you're saying, ladies and so gentlemen. How did back. this old rerun <laughs> pop up in my... No, Josh McCuga, the first ever returning We Have Cool really? Friends. Really? Yeah, no one's ever done We Have Cool Friends twice. Oh, You have, man. though. I feel very, very special. Nick, what is your problem? I mean, before cool. we get Listen into it, I, just, I have a bone to pick with everyone that works at the Kind of Funny Studios. They're Ooh. not all watching this or in the Who room. Who does this? Now, there's only two people other than me that drink Coke Zero at this office. Andy? It's Andy and Joey sometimes. Now, I don't think this is a Joey maneuver, so I'm going to blame this on Andy. Audio listeners, I'm holding a two-liter bottle of Coke Zero. It's still cold, and there's literally maybe a swallow left at the bottom of it. That's a swig. This is just That's plain old-fashioned. What the hell, Can Andy? Can we get the shock mic turned why, why would you shock leave this? Shock mic is not up. It is That's, up. It is up. Why now. would you leave this? I haven't even taken a sip out of that bottle. Well, then it's that piece of shit, Not, Joey Noel. Or nor the other bottle that was there that quickly disappears. I think you need to ease up on the clutch with the Coca-Cola and Zero. I had right? like, You're drinking bourbon at 10.30 in the morning. It is 11.50. Don't worry okay? about it. And I Cheers. had maybe two cans. It's from noon somewhere, pass. Barrett. This is, someone's got a problem. It's noon and right it's not here right me. now. I refuse to admit that it's me. <laughs> it's noon. Josh, what I'd really like to do, and Andy, I'm glad you're here for this. What I'd like to do is congratulate you, Josh, on the most successful episode of KF <laughs> or KFAF in months. Months. I'm looking back at this pitiful thing. A month ago, as far back as the playlist will go, 14K views. Overnight already, 16K. Oh, okay. First off, oh, I mean, first off, last week's episode, one 16K. K. We've already first off, you went to two Pokemon. Look at us. You get two winners You went to in there. One, the one episode that had 14K, the one prior to that. I'm just saying, 000. as far back as I can go, see? I oh, know there. It did go back further. No, 17. So we're still there. We're still right there. You know what I mean? So There's much time. There's episodes 22,000 right I'm there. I'm just saying, though. Left. Look at how far back. I mean, look, like, as far back as it goes. Barely enough to cover how the bottom half of How about you just tweet out every episode from now on, Greg? I guarantee it had nothing to do with the tweets. It had to do with the great thumbnail that you made. Great and thumbnail. that's why I am voting for when Josh and I take over KFAF. <laughs> you still make the thumbnails. Cool. Yeah, I'm in. You guys can have it. I'm yeah. in. You guys, Andy, let's do another show. That's called AFKF. It's part of my eight point pitch uh, after we do this show of me taking over KFAF is part one of the pitch. Yeah. Because everybody knows the better looking Scarpino needs to be hosting. Oh, Carboni? Yeah. Correct. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 And then, Carboni. Okay. Sure. I don't yeah. know. Carboni's like. You know how the Dragon Balls have like fucking f- no the nope, Pokemon. I sure don't know, you know what the, the Dragon Balls have. have. The Dragon Ball. You know how the, the Pokemon have evolution. like three evolutions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm clearly the base. He might be the middle, but like the top one has to be Carboni. You Carboni? think Carboni is better looking than me? You're 100%. Out of your mind. That's an old photo of him too. <laughs> now, would I rather be in your arms than Carboni's arms? Hundred percent. Okay. Look mm-hmm. at those fucking things. How many pull ups can you do right now? Twenty. Show I could us. Probably do twenty. Twenty. Yeah, Carboni can't do a pull up. Right I here. Come right here. Be come careful. Right here you, you might shock yourself. No, he won't. All right, hold on. Come a little. There you go. Perfect. That's there. All right, here we go. Yeah, uh, I mean, maybe. it holds Kevin. It holds Kevin. Maybe yeah. don't try. So one, two, three. Now you're going like a four, quarter of the way down. Five, I just know. six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Wow. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. He said he'd do twenty. He did it. Man, How eat your you heart out, Yusef. Not one. I can. I've never been able to do a pull. Really? No. I way. bet you could. Pull ups are mental. I bet. You, I bet if you just told yourself you could do one, you could do one. <laughs> come on, Greg. Oh, come no, on. that's a, not, no, that's a chin up. That's a pull up right yeah. there. Yeah. So can I start down here? You can start wherever you want. You can do what Josh did and just get a jump start. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe they're med- maybe Superman! they're physical also. Superman. Maybe they're physical also. It hurts, also. <laughs> man. That's why I only do the stairmaster. That, that's good for you. Yeah, I know. Greg's all cardio. Exactly. Yeah. That's why I want to be able to run from the zombies. You, know <laughs> you, got, I mean? you gotta you gotta lift something heavy every once in a while. Just know you're. I still carry alive. this fucking company on my back every day. <laughs> that is true. That's right? true. Well, I, I like to think of you as the right roller skate and Kevin as the left roller skate. And me He's and, and, and Tim are just holding each other and just realize, getting around. Oh, okay. I see yeah, what's yeah, happening. Yeah, I like I'm holding Tim. I was because Tim ain't holding shit. I mean, you know, ladies and gentlemen, this is, we have cool friends, cool friends. We're in cool, cool, cool people. Uh, it's irregularly scheduled programming, as I'm sure you're aware, meaning it comes and goes as it pleases. But it's here now. You can subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, podcast services around the globe. Catch it as a video on YouTube.com slash kind of funny, roosterteeth.com, where you can see us or me attempt to do pull ups. Josh, do 20 pull ups. Uh, of course, subscribe to all the channels, like all the things, do that stuff. Uh, we want to, of course, thank our Patreon producers James Davis, David Mindtel, the Mind Freak, Mohammed Mohammed, Justin Toft, uh, Al Tribesman, uh, Drew Gardnier Frutis, Blackjack, Jarrett Brown, Cassandra Ramirez. For Blackjacks, we whack. 
Oh sure, like the okay, like the blackjack. I think blackjack like twenty one. Yeah. You're saying blackjack like the thing you knock people out yeah, with like, in comics. Yeah, and stuff. yeah, yeah. What okay, about cool. hit me? Like oh, that's better. that's good too. And slightly less violent. Uh, Ian Jacobs or more violent. I don't. Zachary know. Smith, Joseph Solar, uh, Sean Fellows, Morgan Gorenson. Uh, the nanobiologist, Frank <laughs> It got me in the back one. Morgan Gorgonson got me in the back end. Yeah, Morgan. Uh, Jameson uh You're the first person ever to pronounce my name correctly. Most people just call me Morgan. <laughs> hey, man, I'm right. It's got it's got the red squiggly and everything. Morgan. I'm reading it the way it's yeah. written, all right? Morgana. And Quaid, Star 3 actor, Burnett. Uh, today we're sponsored by MeUndies and Indochino, but we'll tell you about that later. Josh, the reason you're here isn't just because you're a, we, cool friends. You come on, talk about your life. What are you doing? We already heard your fucking life. We're <laughs> bored with it, right? But since then, there's sure. been a development. You have a TV You're, show now. I do. What's well, this TV show? Well, last time I was here, you were talking. One of the questions you asked me is like, do you like it? Do you like what you do? Because sure. I talked about like the hustle, the hustle, losing TV shows, having TV shows, whatever the case may be, writing shows, selling shows. And it just so happened that, you know, the same production company that I did the Epic Happy Hour show with on Travel Channel yeah. um, was working on this show with History, and they brought in a bunch of different people, and I just so happened to be one of those people that they brought in, and it was like lightning striking at the, the same time that I kind of needed it to strike. It was like talent and an idea. Uh, it's called Eating History. It comes out May twenty March May 25th. March 25th on History, 10 p.m. It's Wednesday night. We air Wednesdays. Uh, f- you know, after March 25th, I think five, six weeks in a row, there's 12 episodes, wow. and I think they're back to back. So, 10, oh, 10, nice. 30. Okay, so you're getting two, are they 30 minutes? Yeah, two 30 minute episodes back to back. And then I think they'll do like they want, I think they want to stretch it over 10 weeks, but I haven't seen an exact schedule yet. As I've learned through this process, is a lot of times they'll tell you a certain date, and then that certain date gets changed because we were originally supposed to be March 11th, but now yeah. we're March 25th, and that is uh, supposedly in stone. But Trailer's out. I've seen the trailer. Trailer is yeah, out. Yeah. Trailer is out. Um, and it's it's been a wild adventure because when I was I came for the live stream in January, and that was like one of my few weeks off in between like Christmas and then getting back on the road, and we had filmed about like half the episodes, and I didn't die. <laughs> And then I didn't die in the second half. I was going to say, this, um, this is now proof that you yes. didn't die in the second half. I, we have to go back to New York next week uh, and finish up like some ADR, some voiceover. What's ADR kind of, for some of ADR know. is like um, pickup lines, like for, mostly for sound. Like supposedly we set a line and they really liked it, but they didn't get a perfect sound. There's like a jackhammer in the back or something? Correct. Gotcha. Yes. And that's exactly probably what happened because where we were filming was like next to the busiest construction site in New York. Sure. Uh, I've basically been living in New York since November. Which so yeah, stop stop it all together and yeah. take me way back. So you talk about it being that there was this perfect storm, all this activity yes. and stuff. How long ago was that? And like, it was that they were they knew they were working on the show, obviously, and they reached out to people they knew. Why is he even on the show? Because Nick does this all the time. He just likes to be. On, what, what are you ordering for lunch? I guarantee that's what it is. What's yeah, I was trying to get Cool G to run to the store and get me some CZ. <laughs> So that I could get more fucking courage. Pretty juice close. There. Pretty courage close. Juice, the CZ. Pretty huh? close. You see how empty that was? How pathetically empty that two liter bottle Just was? Just like the talent sitting next to me. Damn. I mean, I don't want to say anything, but <laughs> you're right. <laughs> it's a big man for how little talent's actually wrapped in that bulbous body. All right. Do let's be up. nice Come to on. each other, guys. Come on. It's Thursday. I'll be nice to shit. I'll be nice on Saturdays. I'm sleeping. Cool I don't know what that means. <laughs> you were there. You had what? it. <laughs> what? what? Do you sleep all day Saturday? No, I usually sleep until about 10 o'clock on Saturday, if I can. Oh, They've been doing a lot of construction in my apartment mm. lately, so it's it's dice. It's a dice roll as to whether or not I'll get yeah. woken up at 7.30 again. I've, are, you, are you guys sleeper inners? I can't sleep in. Oh, I can't anymore. No, I used yeah. to be able to. Now now it's a big thing if it's like 8.30. Ooh. If I roll over at 8.30, I'm like, oh, wow. wow. So what time do you go to bed at night, though? Depends. This week's been a slog, man. I mean, I've been knocking off super early, like 10 o'clock, 10.30. Yeah. So usually I, don't, I try to make it to midnight so I can play games while Jen's asleep. Yeah. I usually usually generally go to bed between midnight and 1 a.m. I can't usually turn my brain off. Last it's, night it's I went whatever's to bed great on HBO, right? Whatever horrible movies usually on TV. Usually I let the TV decide. I like to catch them in the wild. You know what Can I mean? you guys go to sleep without a screen on? Oh, yeah. I don't have a screen. We have a screen I can't, in the I can't bedroom. watch TV. Really? Bedrooms for sleeping and fucking. You know what I mean? <laughs> Also, it's Jen's office, so it's also for working, I guess. <laughs> Pertillo sleeps in there, too, so it's a dog well, bed as well. just go and get it. Here, I got you right here. Fucking make it rain on him. No, Cool G, never apologize. Here. Give me a handshake. Ooh, give him that you one. do great work here. We're proud of you. All right? Love you, buddy. Great to hey, see you. Hey, can you get more bourbon, too, because me and Josh are going to drink it all? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Because we're doing a thing with the P.S. I Love You after this. Oh, this nice. afternoon, I wanted to drink during that, too. Okay. So I'm going to be nice. I'll be Thanks, Cool G. And P.S. I Love You is clearly about the Catherine Heigl movie. Exactly, yeah. of course. Now, here's what I want to just point out to everyone, you included. He gave me a lot of shit. For doing that. And then when Cool G came in, my great idea, he piggybacked on top of that. That's how this company was built. It's okay. My idea to leave IGN to begin with. 
but it wasn't well, I, to build a company. I just said I want to leave. Being forced out already. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. So no, I just couldn't work under help. Need help. I just couldn't work under Fran anymore. Sure. Uh, it just yeah. was driving me crazy. Sure. Yeah. Well, uh, you and kept, I was like, I'll do anything to get away from Fran. Please, you, God, don't let Fran ever come near me again. You and kept now wearing he works those hanging brain shorts to work, yep. and that was people were, had had enough of it. Oh my God, I lost it. I lost it yesterday. That was a great gold topic. Sometimes you get gold. You give gold. Gold. Go gold. What's your What's your read on the new Magnum PI? I've never watched an episode, but I got to be honest with you. I, Tom Selleck is. Are you sure you're not drinking? <laughs> Who cares? It's no, his, I love it. History Channel. History is Wednesdays. One hundred percent. I was telling you to stop it. Wednesday. This is going to be a fun show where we go everywhere and do it. We, we already heard him having, having fucking threesomes with David Bowie. Yeah, we, it's fine. Is it, go watch the other go one. Do I know about yeah. It's a good yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, I just want to hear. I like. I don't get a chance to actually talk to a real TV and film aficionado ever because you fucking hacks. All you do is play video games and you're super renowned in the video game industry. And you make money for this company, and I'm fucking tired of it. Okay, what is your what is your read on a show you've never watched? I've never seen Greg look more upset than he is. He right hates now. me so much, <laughs> but I need you so much. Because I, 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 if not, it's just him. Yeah, no. <laughs> I will say this: is I was sitting on the couch back there, and and I was making a joke, like a terrible joke, and then Nick would say something terrible, and yeah. he'd come back to me, and Tim goes. See, it's usually just Nick. Yeah. <laughs> you come in and out. But you're, Nick is always here, and now you're both here. Yeah. And I could see, like, Tim was getting a little more red in the face than normal. He was getting a little upset. I love he it when Makuki's in the office, because it's, it's like in the old Batman, you know, the Burt Ward, Adam West Batman, sure. when you'd see Batgirl right across in the cycle in the beginning. You're like, oh, man, it's a special episode. Oh, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. One of our favorites is back. So yeah, you're calling me Barbara West. Hell, Hell yeah, yeah, bro. Buddy. Isn't that who Batgirl is? Barbara, Barbara Gordon. Gordon. Barbara Gordon. Yeah, yeah. Adam, Adam West. West. Adam West. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoops, it is. And I was like, running through, like, I'm yeah. pretty sure, no, she was related to Commissioner Gordon in the, yeah. that show. Too. Do you guys watch uh, Batwoman on CW? I've seen it. I don't okay. watch it. My friend Kayla was just on the last episode. She played the villain Nocturna. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Our friend Rahul that. Coley was on Supergirl once. Whoa. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah. yeah big time. Um, what, what were we talking about? Uh, Batman. He, uh, oh, he wanted to yell episode. about Magnum oh. P.I. or something. Oh, yeah. See, Magnum P.I. in my family was like the show. Yeah. Growing up, my aunt named her cat Magnum. This one, this cat in this picture over here is named Makuga. But uh, we don't have it possible. Let's get that shot. You go, yeah, how wide should we go? Yeah, you yeah, can't it's see it. Because it's one of those things where we wanted to put all of our cool friends on there, but then the ones that get closest to the camera, they can't be seen because they're just not that cool. So you still got Porty, of course. Porty has to be seen. I put Ellis on there, though. You can see Ellis. Cool, 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 cool. Thanks, Barrett. Um, but Magna, like my aunt named her cat Magnum. Like uh, everybody wanted that Ferrari. I think my dad wore like those short shorts for Jerry way did. past when they Jerry were supposed did. to be worn. I mean, he's hair. an Italian guy with hairy legs. I mean, I can grow a mustache, and people say, "Wow, you look eerily unsimilar to Tom Selleck." But the only reason that I would have a mustache yeah. is to try and look a little bit like Tom like Selleck. Tom Selleck, like yeah. just a touch like Tom Selleck. Even in Blue Bloods, the mustache still like inhabits his upper it lip. Is he's timeless? It's, he's he timeless. Is timeless. Like, the fact that he could go on Friends when he was clearly, like, late 50s and date Monica. Yeah. And everybody was like, no problem with that at all. He's just a handsome friggin' old yeah, man. Yeah, that was the story. But everybody Richard. still had a crush on him, you know what I mean? Yeah, And then he went, remember when he got in a fight with Rosie O'Donnell about gun control, though? Yeah. Not as cool. Uh, not, not as cool. cool. Not as cool. Oh, and then she uh, married fucking Chandler Bing. What a step down Monica, that was. not Rosie O'Donnell. No. <laughs> 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 Nick's I was like, what? Who that? did Rosie O'Donnell marry? I'm not uh, sure. I, wasn't that like actually. a Rosie's Family Cruise? Wasn't that like a show at was one it? point? I don't know. Uh, Rosie O'Donnell was like huge for a while. Dude, Queen of Nice, man. The Rosie O'Donnell show. That like talk show that she had. Where she would like was in love with Tom Cruise, which yeah. was one big ruse, yeah, because she was clearly not into dudes. You know what I mean? But you can, I mean, I don't think she was in love that way. It's the same way, like Nick's in love with uh, Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth. Well, but I don't think it doesn't have to be a sexual thing. Yeah, she had a crush oh, on. No, I, uh, I would legitimately fuck Chris Hemsworth. My apologies. She had a crush on yeah. Donny Osmond too. And remember when Donny Osmond called her fat, and then uh, it was like this whole fucking yeah. thing, and he had to come oh, and apologize and sing a song. Right, right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. Right, right, they, yeah, she made a great show. Good content. Yeah, remember yeah, she, she shot was... the koosh balls into the crowd. Yep. I we were talking about this earlier. Do you understand that when we were doing PS I Love You the other week, it was Barrett running the boards, blessing next to me, and they didn't know what a fuck a koosh ball, ball was. <sighs> Again, we knew what they were. We didn't know that they were called koosh <sighs> balls. We like I grew up with those. We just didn't know. I was the such a Rosie name. fan. I watched it every day growing up when it was I'd on come home summer from vacation. And it was there. Do you remember? Do you do you remember how you knew it was the last joke of the day? Because no, she would shoot a koosh ball out of something. It was taped to the desk. 
And eventually that became oh. such a thing she'd have the audience cheer it. It's last joke, and how do you know? Because it's taped to the desk. Right. The Rosie show is a great show. They, it was very, very good. Do you Probably, see? I think I based a lot of my looks and styling on it. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and, and my, your, my talk show host. And your voice, to, to a certain degree. <laughs> do you see a reality, Greg, where you leave Kind of Funny and just host a daytime television show for CBS? No, I mean, because when Kind of Funny goes under, it's not going it, to... My career's nuked. Oh, you're canceled I, I will be, immediately? We'll, oh, exactly. Whatever took us out is what I'm part of it. Yeah, it's you, but I can't get away from it. You know what I mean? That's fine. I will say this. Splash like zone. Coronavirus. I don't know if I brought this up in the live stream because the last few hours are a little hazy, like sure. like most live streams. Have you guys ever had a background check done on you for something? Yes, I didn't know they were doing it, but yes. Okay, so my I was given mine was given to me Ooh, by the law firm. I I still have it because it's like pride and joy situation, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, I had no idea that I was so hated on Reddit and Reddit alone. There was also a Change.org petition about to take me. Awesome. Away from Collider TV talk. Just sure. that show. May, uh, re- eliminate me How as many host. people signed it? One. Oh, okay. The guy who made it. The guy who made it, yeah. That's that, what's his name, that piece of shit? I don't know. I didn't even look. Hey, fuck you guys. But, my, my, uh, but if you have to go and Sorry, delete things off social media, and it really, like, the background check wasn't that bad mostly. It was just, like, hilarious. But it was 25 pages. And it was most, like, one page per, like, weird thing. Like, a couple were Collider videos. A yeah, couple were, like, yeah. old Between the Sheets episodes. Uh, and they were, like, he, instances of Josh going after commenters. One was, like, a Trump <laughs> tweet, right? Like, they, it all just, like, because a lot of people think that my joke, like, listen. My jokes on Twitter are 100% sarcastic and 100% terrible, and this I know. Like, I'm not going for, yeah, like... But your jokes on Twitter aren't, like, incendiary. No, You're, no, they're, no, They're, no. like, dad jokes on Twitter. 100% dad jokes. So like, if people can't take that... If you literally can't take a Josh Makuga joke, you cannot take a joke. Mm. You just well need to said. stay away from humor in general. Yeah, it's, My jokes, obviously, can be very misconstrued. <laughs> they're <laughs> very highbrow. Quickly. They're highbrow. They're Way s- too smart. They're just, yeah, they're horrible. My my most hated thing is when somebody tells me, oh, it's a real smart comedy. I'm like, ugh, God, that sounds exhausting. A smart comedy? Yeah. Like, What's an example of a smart comedy? I, I don't think, know. From, from these people. Probably like Big Book Lebowski. Smart. Big Book Smart is very funny, I think. It's smart, too, though. It's smart. But it's funny. You see like, you're saying Big Lebowski's more smart. Yeah, where it's, like, it's, it's not like, like, like the, laugh out loud. It's correct. like these are, you got to watch it a couple times. Yeah. It's better like, every oh, this is like, you know, we, uh, we have our like inside things. We, uh, give me MacGruber every day of the week. Give me uh, Dumb okay. and Dumber. Sure. Give sure. me Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. MacGruber has one funny moment. And it's the first time he has Josh is already pissed at this comment. It's the first time he has sex with, with Maya Rudolph. Where he's like, eh, eh, eh. I laugh out loud. The rest of it, just take it, put it in a box, bury it, and then burn it. In that order. Burn you the forest. You know what? You should have put cool Greg here down. and you gone to get your Coke Zero. Because I refuse to sit here with somebody that doesn't like Bad Boys 2. One and, and two. I get one. I like Four Life. You did like Four Life. Yeah. Okay. But first you didn't off. like two. No. First off. And you don't like MacGruber? Barrett, do you like MacGruber? Barrett doesn't know what MacGruber is. I don't. Oh my God. God. And Barrett, you know what Barrett? Barrett's 19. <laughs> but here's the thing, Barrett. You don't need to know what He's working here is. for college credit. Barrett, you know that I consider myself your mentor, right? Whether you like it or not. Clearly. Is I like that, that he did time out. I, real quick time out. In, answer honestly, Barrett. How many one-on-one conversations do you think you've had with Nick Scarvina? Maybe two. I would say three. Honest, honestly, since I've worked here, I'd say at least 15. Okay. That's way better than I thought. Oh, if if get, I had worked here, I, I think that <laughs> I probably would have gone out for drinks with Barrett and not invited Nick. Yeah, you know I did I mean? that. I, I, look, Nick, Barrett invited Greg and I to officiate his wedding. Greg's going to take the brunt of it, and I'm going to be color. Clearly. That's what a friend is. A Comment, friend is somebody that recognizes McGruber. Here's the deal. Going back to we got a lot to A friend is here. somebody we're that get, owns have... KFAF, right? Brings That's the heat. That's what we do. That's what we do. Brings the hits. First off, I brought the heat into the room. Greg actually got it for us. Second off. You're like Craig Kilborn. Yeah. And we're John Stewart in Th- one. Thank you. You know what I thank mean? You know, I'll take that. Craig yeah. Kilborn, great career. Yeah. <laughs> great career for a while. <laughs> for a while. He was what? no. He was only me too like six times. Daily show and then uh the, the old Craig school. Kilborn. That was it. Old school. And then he's like, yeah, he was like, yeah, he's an old yep. school. Done. Oh, yeah. Great movie though. Uh, here's the deal about with Barrett though. Barrett and I, you guys don't see it because Barrett will come back, we'll have actual intellectual conversations about movies. Yep. We'll talk about what we like, what we didn't like. McGruber is not a movie that anyone should ever talk about. We've already spent way too much time talking about it, well, and I want that you, time back. Let me tell you a little something about MacGruber, okay? Barrett, listen up. First of all, I think you'll really like it, to be honest with you. I think it is light, you, laugh you out loud not. funny. Is the it, people in my life that Will like For- MacGruber, it's Will Forte playing that SNL character. Is MacGruber! It, is it making fun of MacGyver? MacGyver. Correct, yes. Okay. But yes. it's not doing it in any intellectual way. No. It is the most... It's not supposed to. It is the most low-brow 
lazy humor. And this is coming from me. I am the laziest comedian something. I know. But it is fucking lazy. And it there is it is, is there just, a comment section on this show? Yeah. You can you can put it. Hey, but, hey, listen, if I'm wrong, you're wrong. You're wrong. Bring up Rotten Tomatoes. If it has over 30%, I'll be shocked. <laughs> you just proved my point. <laughs> What's with it? So Will Forte, by the way, I think is fucking hilarious. He's hilarious. But he's I think he's really, really Drum funny. Drum roll, he, please. Tomato meat or the thermometer has it at 48%. Whoa! Almost oh. fresh! Audience score at 35%. Oh, yeah! <laughs> so po- supposedly my buddy Sam Levine, uh, who. And then the uh, chat. Sam Levine. Yeah. You know Sam? Yeah, we know and Sam. then yeah. the chat. Uh, you want it live? We usually don't yes. do it on the show, but I'll do it okay. for you because whatever. Okay. Uh, the chat says this is from a young boy named Andy Cortez. Oh, Nick, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Thanks, Andy! Andy, Andy uh, if you're watching this show, stop drinking all of the fucking Coke Zero that I bring in and pull your weight. Bring some in for Christ's sake. I can't uh, be the only one bringing that sweet, sweet, sweet dark juice in. That sweet young boy says Nick loves awful comedies too. I do. I do. It's just McGruber, I can objectively say, is just not good. See, this is why you need to do in review like comedies with me so that we can yell about good comedies and bad comedies and me always vouch for all of them. Um, I like I that, but that. what if instead it was you and me and the show did markedly ben. better, just like well, KFA? Is. Yeah, like well, we could have Nick behind the camera. Just that's like, the thing for this for this thumbnail. It needs to be you and me in the thumbnail, and then Nick really tiny, real like tiny. on our shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll take it. I'll take it. I like this. Like I'm about to Andy, climb into your ear. Start working on that thumbnail, <laughs> guys. Uh, eating history, March 25th, 10 p.m. History. Keep pumping it. Keep yeah. it. Um, well, uh, we didn't. We actually haven't caught up yet, though. Yeah. How do we feel about this new era where Bad Boys is going to be? A continuing thing. It's I it think crushed, it's, right? They it crushed. It's yeah. still like top ten at the box office every every weekend since it's been out. Last how do you, weekend how do you feel about the new team with with the Bad Boys team? I like uh, the out. kid from Vikings was really good. I like him. The kid, he's the giant uh, the, guy. Yeah, the big kid. Yeah, that, like, who didn't want to fight, but then he had to. But fight. Then he had Spoilers to fight. incoming for Bad Boys for life. There's yeah. no. Fucking, um, I can't not, wait to watch. Like, I'm not even gonna rent it on demand. I'm gonna buy it straight up and like save it. I I loved that movie. Really loved it. I thought there was like certain aspects of it that I was like, I don't know, maybe they're making um, Mike Lowry too much of a superhero, but let's be honest. He's That's a superhero. He's always, been. He's That's always, always, been. always been. It's not Bad Boys 2, but I, in my ranking, it goes two for life, one. See, I have such a special place in my heart for one. Really? I know it's not a good movie. It's yeah. like you read the trivia on it, and Michael Bay himself will be like, we had no budget for this. We didn't have a lot of time. We, there were shots that they just didn't get. And so the movie together, the movie feels obviously cobbled together because it's very cobbled together in the uh, in the edit. But there's a certain chemistry the two of them have in that movie. Just like in I two just, and just like in three. In three. Well, three, they didn't have the, the, I mean, the chemistry was there. It was just a little slower. Let's put it that way. And it wasn't Will Smith's fault. No. Uh, and Martin I Lawrence think, has lost dude, a little Martin bit Martin Lawrence is so skinny in the first one. Like yeah. he he's is tiny. Rail it's old school skinny. Martin Lawrence. Yeah. Like Martin Lawrence where he's doing And uh, he's bigger. And for life, for sure. Like he's bigger. Yeah, he's got it's like it. Tim from that picture they just he, posted versus as, now. As Jesus. we said, <laughs> he's not even here. To, uh, he'll hear it. As I said to Tim, he hasn't put on weight. He's gained inertia. Sure. It's, it's, it's sure. He is gaining inertia. Tim told it, a story about when he was in this uh, Bali. What was it? Bali. It was a Bali water slide water slide it, park. You go straight down and it whips you around a it, loop. It, it whips you around stuck. and he goes. People kept getting stuck. And Josh McCook is like, who? What kind of person gets stuck? And he goes, oh, mainly small girls. Yeah. And we're like, how did you not get stuck? He goes, oh, because I was going real fast. Or that <laughs> I, had I had the inertia. Yeah. And I was like, okay. Yeah. So okay, he, Tim. he's not gaining weight. He's gaining inertia. Gaining well, inertia. But didn't he also gain that weight because he got like injured or something like that? Tim? Tim? No. No. Martin. Oh, Martin Lawrence? Yeah. I don't. I think just he's old, man. What the fuck are you going to do? They're in their, they got to be in their late 50s at this point. Well, I don't understand. I my, think one he complaint complaint recently film, lost a bunch okay. of weight. My too. complaint with the film, right, is that Martin Lawrence didn't end up as the captain at the end. I know. That was That would have been bummer. perfect. Put him behind the desk. Totally. Like that that would have been a good role for him and have Will with the young kid. And, that, uh, leads, Hudgens and that leads it up to four, the next one. Yeah. Oh, yeah which yeah, is, yeah. I. If they're not going to call it Bad Boys for Life. I would imagine it's going to be Bad Boys for Life. It'd be amazing if they were like, oh, let's retcon it. This is, Four should have been Bad Boys for hey Life. Hey, guys, we're calling yes. this again Bad Boys for Life. God. Yeah, uh, two. Bad, Bad Boys, Boys for Life, three two. would have been great. Well, because everybody knows that the two movies in the franchise are the better ones. Bad Boys for Life 2, you know, Bad Boys 2, Bad Boys 2, Bad Boys for Life 2. What, what was the other two exactly? Bad Boys 2. You see what I'm saying? Like Bad Boys, then Bad Boys 2, Bad Boys for Life, Bad Boys for Life You mean two. the even numbers. Okay, now I'm with you. Now I'm there. You, you got me. You, you got me at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I, like I get I like you around? That. You get me around? I see what you're saying. Um, I'm sorry. You know, I mean... It, Pardon me for being confused on that one. Here's the thing Idiot. that... <laughs> you dumb dummy. Oh, like here's what they need to do. And do you remember the Sony email leak from like oh, yeah, 10 years ago? yeah, that ousted Amy Pascal. Yeah, it's going to be fucking 21 Jump Street and Men in Black. Men in Black. Now it's going to be 21 Jump Street. 
Bad Boys for Life. It, it should have been Fast and Furious. It should we be joked Fast around and about Furious. The, and different I know it's different studios. studios. I, know, I know, but, it's but different they need studios. to find a way, man. Yeah. They got to bridge that gap. But when Will Smith walked in to talk to is again Bad Boys for Life spoilers, his son. And he had that folder. I was like so hoping for the 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 dom or the the Letty moment from when uh, Rock walks in and drops it yes. on at Ava Mendez's desk or whatever. Yes. Yep. That's. I mean, they're taking a total page out of that book, which is genius because we all know in the history of. I will go up and I tweeted this out, and I've never gotten more hate about it. I almost had to take down the tweet because they were starting to really like assault. Don't do that. Just don't assault read the, Amanda. The comments. Um, is that I think Fast and the Furious is a better franchise than Star Wars. Wow. You, you think Fast and Furious is a better franchise than Star Wars? They have both have they're both going to have nine movies, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. At the end of this one, and we all watched the trailer. They're they're driving a car against gravity. I okay? think I, I'm, they're I'm, beating gravity. I'm almost Define on that side. I think say. Fast and Furious will end the uh, Fast and Furious saga will end better than the Star Wars saga did. I'm I'm there oh, with you. You mean the Skywalker saga? What what fucking ever? That's see, but that's what I'm getting at here is that you what you're what you have with. The Fast and the Furious franchise is nowhere near the divisiveness that you have with Star Wars. Sure. You have the first three that everybody supposedly loves, and then everybody will come at me like that Return of the Jedi is a joke, Ewoks are stupid. And I'm like, you sound stupid, Shih Tzus are the cutest dogs of all time, <laughs> next to Porty, and Shih Tzus are what Ewoks were based off of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, they're adorable dogs. Is that but, really what people come at you about? Yeah, they, they, they hate Ewoks. Well, That's, I mean, I get, I, I, I mean, I, I'm not, I, 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 have no, I have no ill will towards the Ewoks. Okay. Yub, yub, yip cha. Oh, but yeah. it's just, you know what I mean? Like, the fact that do you say that like makes them as bad as the prequels? No, 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 no. I no. just I do want to pause no, for a second. I'm, you did the first one in in like human speak, and then you went into the accent. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. It's kind of like Andy saying that. like "Hello and welcome to Jalapeno Hour" with Andy with Max Cortez. Fake across the board. <laughs> and he's, he drinks all my goddamn CZ. I, I, I heard he dyes his hair. That was always jet black. That was always my joke. Was like people would come to the bar and be like, "Hey man, what's going on? Can I have a mojito?" And I'm like, uh, "Yeah." Sure. Look, I'll say this: as far as like polarization goes, yeah, yeah the Fast and Furious. If you're either a diehard Fast and Furious fan or you just don't care about the series, right? And for people that like, but I think like Star myself, Wars is the same way. No, Star Wars. There are people that are have have fallen out of love with it, but still want it to be good. Like, there's still a a, a a group of fans that are polarized on both sides of Star Wars. You don't find, there's no group of fans, of Fast and Furious fans, who are like, oh man, that series used to be better back in the fucking Tokyo Drip. We're all just along for the ride with Fast and Furious. Uh, and and no whatever they give us, we I go, whatever, you. who gives a shit? Because Fast and Furious, the, the reason, nobody has that big of a vested interest in Fast and Furious. Okay, I look at the Fast and the Furious. You just go because it's they're super fun movies to watch. Yeah, and that's what Star Wars was supposed to be and until we all no, became I mean, R Rupert or, uh, uh, you know, Siskel and Ebert and came in no, and were but like, the, but the prequels weren't any good because the Force was used differently than it was used in the first two movies. I didn't know that people didn't like the prequels until I met a lot of really diehard Star Wars friends and like, prequels are terrible. I'm like, what? The Phantom Menace is bad? It's bad. It's yeah. It's, I it's enjoy. Objectively bad. I've enjoyed every Star Wars movie. I've enjoyed it, but I'm not a diehard fan. And when I've gone to Star Wars Celebration, and I've met like a lot of these diehards. They're like, "You sound like an idiot. You sound really stupid." And I'm like, "Okay, I get it." But I also try and look at the positive of everything. That's why, like, when I do reviews, nobody ever because like I love the movie. Let's be cops. Nobody liked that. Movie. First off, <laughs> full stop. That movie is fucking hilarious. Okay, it's thank so you. Good. That it movie is, so is good. really, really, really funny. It's been it's, on my watch list for years. Dude, watch but it. I've just never motivated. It, you would, it's, I, it's, I, uh, I like uh, no, Nick, Jake, It's Jake Nick Johnson. Miller. Yeah. Nick Miller from New Girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jake oh. Johnson. Yes. And, uh, it's Jake Johnson and uh, which Wayans? The Wayans. Wayans. Uh, Damon Wayans, Wayans Jr. Damon Wayans yeah. Jr. Yeah. And they're both from New Girl. And yeah, they're so both from New Girl. already got that like chemistry. And my friend Nina Dobrev. Oh, dude, it's... I'm a name dropper. That's what I do. It's a hilarious concept. It's, no, know, it I'm was a little sleeper that came through. I watched it. You know what we need to do? Off. What we need to do is we Call need to Jake make Johnson some. Right we'll now. make some pasta carbonara and some Nick yeah. Scarpino pizzas. Oh yeah. Sure. Okay. We'll throw in Let's Be Cops. Yeah. We'll break out a bottle of bourbon. Yeah. We'll finish Ooh. it. Yeah. Okay. That was. I we'll raised my hand. Nick raises his hand. Yeah. I raised my okay, hand. Ask questions because because people used to call me. I, you interrupt too much, Nick. So or should we have like a watch along of Let's Be Cops for Greg's first time at like an Alamo Draft House somewhere and get sponsored? If we can get Alamo Draft House sponsorship, sure. Let's do it. Cool. Of course, remember that ninety percent of the people here have terrible taste in movie theaters and hate the Alamo Draft House, and I'm the one defending. Off. It's just Kevin. Okay. Second. No, no Tim me. is two. It, and me. then somehow they sway Joey, which I don't. Well, Tim doesn't like it because you can't too. use AMC. And it's yeah. Barrett too. Yeah. Tim doesn't like it because you can't use the AMC fucking thing. No, Tim. Oh, the picture's not bright enough, and it's not. <laughs> it's not. The darks aren't dark enough, and the sound system isn't as good. And I'm like, well, fuck no, off. It's a, fucking, it's a movie. It's a party in a movie theater. That's why you go to the yeah. Alamo Draft House. First off, right. second off, here's my pitch for you. Can I put a little bow on this amazing present that you wrapped for both of us? You come back up. We we sponsor this. We get it. We fill out the theater with kind of funny best friends okay. and, and 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 Makugatites or whatever you call your people. Uh, everyone comes what do you call up. Your people? 
I don't know. What should we Makuga call Nights. it? Makuga Nights? Yeah. That that's not bad. That's, that's pretty sick. And then we watch Let's Be Cops, followed by the one-two punch double feature, The Heat. Oh. Oof. And I can get my buddy Adam Ray, who's in the movie, or get him to come up and do a Q&A after. Yes. Yeah. Let's go. Because the I have heat, a contact at the draft house. Let's do it. Let's do the it. The Heat might be my, what am I, I and, and I know that this is the thing that roasts me. What are you, so a what knack? I, <laughs> dude, <laughs> what are you, a knack? Dude. You a knack? I haven't seen. <laughs> you haven't seen The Heat? No. Or, dude, Remember, this is what I lost. I lost yeah, the, that's right. the Josh Brady. You'll love it. You'll love both of those movies. I, the, the, one thing about, the one thing about Let's Be Cops is that the montage at the end where they're fucking around, I feel like that should have been the entire movie, though. There wasn't enough of that. Of In Let's Be fucking, Cops? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I feel like they probably should, like, just like Paul Feig would do in any movie, he, you let those actors that are super funny breathe, and then you have to edit down. Like, my, uh, my really good buddy, Brendan, uh, he, he, he worked on Anchorman 2. Mm-hmm. And he said there was probably six to ten hours of footage that they shot, which is a lot for a movie. Didn't they make a whole an- – oh, this is Anchorman 1. Anchor- they made a different one, right? They made a whole different one. For Anchorman 2, six really? to eight hours of footage That's that amazing. wasn't like – and I'm not talking about extra footage that wasn't like, all right, let's do that again. Let's try and get that take. This was legitimately like let Will Ferrell go. Let all the guys just riff. Six to eight hours of footage. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. make the movie. That, like, you could make six DVD and yet, extras. And still, they got Anchorman 2 out of it. Sad. Come on, Anchorman 2 is not that, that bad. Besides the shark not stuff. Not funny. But the fight scene at the end? It's really good. The fight scene at the end is better than the fight scene in the first one. It is. Well, it's just a redo of the fight scene. It's just, <laughs> just another, amped the up. same joke. It's amped up. Anchorman 1 was one of those movies that I watched the Change first your time, life and good. I was like, no. I watched it, I was like, I did not like that movie. <sighs> I, I, don't, I don't think I like this Will Ferrell guy. Uh, I think I'm done. Then I watched it again about a year later, and I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I get it. After yeah. Anchorman, they did Wake Up it. Ron Burgundy, the lost movie. Yeah. Uh, the, this alternate film companion to Anchorman, The Legend of Ron Burgundy, was compiled from dro- dropped subplots and alternate takes. While Ron Burgundy's rivalry with Veronica Corningstone continues, a group of unprofessional thieves, better known as the Alarm Clock, try to make the truth known, <laughs> whatever that may be. Like, that's how much they shot for Anchorman 1, that they were like, fucking make another one, which I also heard wasn't See? good. Was this, yeah. That was Adam McKay, right? Adam McKay yeah. for both movies. He's a good director. He's, I mean, he's turned into this. You know, uh, talk about a, a career pivot, same as Todd Phillips. Yeah, is oh yeah, is they went from these ridiculously amazing comedies to these political, sat, like not satires, like these political commentaries. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Adam McKay didn't he start on SNL? Wasn't he a writer for yeah. SNL? He's the one that basically got Jim Brewer fired. If you ever listen to Jim Brewer, <laughs> Jim Brewer got fired. I don't know. The goat guy. The goat guy. That's for you, Andy. He uh, Adam McKay hated Jim Brewer and he Why? hated like that cast. I don't know. It's a very fun interview on Howard Stern. Howard Stern gets into the whole deep part of Brewer leaving SNL, basically basically being let go, but being told like you can leave or we're just not going to put you in sketches anymore. We'll pay your. I was rate. like, I'll take the fucking. Oh, I would have been like, give me the, the fucking paycheck. paycheck. Yeah, 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 exactly. Daddy's going to Subway. It's like <laughs> listen, to Subway. Jay Moore has. Are good you the goat guy? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I gotta get a ham and cheese. <laughs> Um, but uh, <laughs> what the goat guy? It, good interview about Adam McKay kind of pushing him, not pushing, just like not writing him in his sketches because he didn't like him and he doesn't, he has no idea why, other than the fact that like that was a weird transition for SNL. Yeah, right. It was like funhouse political kind of stuff. Because if you notice, like before what year, what, that must have been what late nineties. Yeah, like no, 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 early nineties, like early, 90, Jim Brewer. Yeah, mid nineties, like like ninety four or something like that. Because um, I, rem- I remember the goat sketch, and I remember him vaguely being on it. And Jim Brewer wasn't on – he wasn't on SNL when he did um, uh, Half-Baked, and that was in, like, 97. Fuck Half-Baked. That's r- Wait, he was See? in Half-Baked? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Craig It was Brewer? him, Ch- uh, Chappelle, and who, who was that? He then joined the cast of Saturday Night Live from 1995 to 1998. Okay, so there you go. That, so Brewer's cr- characters included Goat Boy, who hosted <laughs> the fictional MTV program, Hey, Remember the 80s? <laughs> 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 Let's just put it this way. When you helped produce a show that had that sketch, you don't really have a leg to stand on in any way, shape, or true. form. It's true. He helped put that into the world, Adam <laughs> hey, McKay. Go Guy was cool. Go Guy. I mean, it made me laugh back yeah. in the day. Eating History, March uh, 25th. When I, when, I listen to, when I read and listen to stories of people working on SNL, it sounds like either the greatest or the absolute worst job you could ever yeah, have I don't in know. entertainment. Because like if you listen to Jay Moore's stories, he hates it. If you listen to Kristen Wiig, she loved it. If Chris you Rock to, fucking like, hated Chris it. Chris Rock hated it. If you listen to Eddie Murphy, Larry he David hated it. hated it. Yeah. I think it's like Larry I don't know. David's story is the best. Have you ever did you ever hear that story? No. Where he talks about how everyone was like he's like they had a culture where everyone Tuesday nights was like the night everyone would stay up yeah. twenty four hours and they'd write all the sketches. And he goes, But I got mine done by five. And he goes, So the first week I was there, I, I left. <laughs> And I got in the elevator, and everyone was coming up from having dinner, 
as I was leaving, and they're like, where are you going? And he goes, well, I wrote my sketches. And they go, but you're, you're not going to stick around? He goes, no, why would I? <laughs> yeah. And they're like, but you got to stick around? He goes, why? Why would I do that? I wrote my sketches. That they're was, done. That was the Jay Moore thing. He's like, I never understood why we had to be there 24 hours a day every week of a show. Like, if that's I what I don't think it makes the show better. It doesn't because <laughs> it doesn't. let's, let's well, be honest. Nobody ever learns their fucking lines anymore. No, nobody learns their lines. I mean, you can tell when hosts go on and they're like, uh, I, yeah. I, well, it's not even that. Like, see, here's the thing, and I don't. Even, this is one of the Leslie few things, Jones is bad. At this it, is one I of the mean. few things I will say, like in the same way. And I know you can't talk about it anymore. I know I lost all privileges, but I was a Cosby Show expert. Yeah. Like growing up watching you the syndication. Still Cosby Show. You just can't. We ju- it was a joke. We this podcast. Yes. Hold on. No. Let no, me go. go let me go. go, ahead, go it's go. the same way with SNL. I'm sorry. Where it was. You remember in the old days, the glory days, Comedy Central ran like 15 SNLs a day, and so Summer Vacation would literally be oh, in I Grandma Miller's house watching SNLs, and not. Getting jokes, but like falling in love. Oh, yeah, for sure. But like falling in love with Kevin Nealon, right? And like yes. Dana Carvey and all this shit. Yeah. And I don't know if it's one of those, because I haven't gone back to watch them, because now they, remember when they went to VH1 and you couldn't watch them anymore? Yeah, it was weird. Ass. Yeah. I don't know if it was just watching with kid kid eyes or like younger kid eyes, but like now when I watch SNL and it's better now. I've seen I forget who did one recently where I had to watch Eddie, Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy and Lizzo. Oh, and I went and watched that. Good. It's God. better. But like there was a time within the last five years where you'd watch it and not only the hosts, which I get, you're, you're, this is outside of your element. It's hard. The That's a hard regular skill. cast members would be like not making eye contact with who they're supposed to because they're reading cue cards. Yeah, like, what the fuck's the point of this? Totally. Because I felt like back in the day, no, you remembered your lines. And, and you, you like, what I think is, is ridiculous is that they don't have sketches nailed down until like Saturday morning. Yeah. Like you need, you need to have. It st- just feels like here's the deal: you got that many people. Why not do it? And this is gonna sound crazy in a two week schedule. So like you got A cast and B cast, and they're alternating two weeks. I get that you're writing for different people, and that's how they have it. But like, there is something wonderful about live performance, and truly, live comedy is an art form that is totally different than anything else. Yeah. Like it's different than stand up. That that live style of sketch comedy is a lost art form. So is I'll, live sitcom. I'll just give like them Cosby that. Show, but. Man, yes. I mean, it's 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 just so crazy to me that like you'll watch it and like eighty percent of the sketches are just real rough. Yeah, and then you see a couple that are gold. Obviously, like you've got the you've got the hardcore players. Like I will say, I, I haven't laughed that hard at SNL in a long time since when when they started doing the political stuff where it was like uh, Kate McKinnon as yeah. uh, Hillary Hillary Clinton yeah. and like Baldwin. They kept bringing him back as Trump. That shit fucking killed me. But. There's every once in a while you'll watch, like even the Eddie Murphy stuff. I was like, this is still kind of rough, even though it's Eddie Murphy. But granted, he can't see anymore, so he's squinting at the fucking he, he, at the cards. But he, that's his thing. He he does this a lot, so he can kind of pull it off. But there's a lot of hosts that can't. Like poor John Cena. I mean, Man, he tried. It. it was it was pretty bad at points. Uh, JJ Watt. A lot of these sketches, he was just looking at the. I mean, just looking at the cue card, being like, "Well, JJ Watt, with all due respect to JJ Watt, a very talented, athletic at, person and yeah, a good person. But like, I don't know if he's person. a great actor. You know, right, I mean? right. Like, I remember the first, you, and I'm sure you do remember. But like, remember when The Rock did it? The, yes. at the Height of the Attitude Era, and like, I was obviously into wrestling at the yeah. time. I remember number one, what a huge moment that was for wrestling, and number two, holy shit, he just fucking crushed, crushed this. it. And it was like that first glimpse of like, oh, The Rock can do dance? so much more. But also, I think he's like, been back so many times. Okay. I don't know. But I think like. In, in there's in a certain sense of I mean you know there's a, there's that urban way. legend of Macaulay Culkin whose dad was this diehard like theater dad I've never heard like, of this urban never legend. Heard I'm very this. excited no okay so Macaulay Culkin's dad is this theater dad I'm talking Shia right? LaBeouf right no 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 which Honey Boy awesome I haven't seen it yet it's, it's on my queue awesome don't ruin it one of the oh, best movies on Amazon Prime. one of the best movies of last year oh 100 yeah. percent just awesome still waiting to watch Holes I don't want to get ahead of myself okay, I haven't seen Holes? the sequel Holes also. Very, very good movie. Another H movie with an S at the end. I'm Hustlers, serious, Nick, not very good. Don't. Is that the J-Lo? J-Lo movie? Oh, that one was fun. It was Did fun. Did you like that? It was okay, fun. Let me tell you this. Yeah. The first go hour. Go Macaulay Culkin first. No, no. So we're we're, we're talking about thread. J-Lo and that pole dance and stuff. Let me just. Oh, let me, Hustler? Okay. Yeah. I don't know if I told this on the last, but. Doesn't matter. So, just go. I was doing extra work in New York, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And I was in that movie, We Own the Night. Okay. Oh, I fucking love that movie. It's Ava Mendez, uh, Joaquin uh, Phoenix, Joaquin Mark Phoenix. Wahlberg, Robert Duvall. Yes. Fucking okay. great movie. We own the and night. Nobody so talks about it. I just moved to New York and my buddy was like, hey, an easy way to get in with like, you know, to make money on sets and an easy way to access. Sell drugs. Ex- yeah. Well, Sell I was drugs. already doing that. So uh, no big deal. Don't, history Channel. Uh, March 25th, Eating History. Eating 10 cocaine. p.m. <laughs> 10 p.m. <laughs> 10 p.m. Wednesdays. Thanks, guys. So, um, so I signed up for this like central casting thing, right? And yeah. my first, like the first day, I like sign up. I get a phone call an hour later. Hey, can you be in the Bronx tomorrow by seven a.m.? And I was like, Yeah, sure. Like, yeah, you I know, can. here's here's what you're gonna make. Here's what movie you're on. Here's who you report to. Yada yada yada. Here's what you need to wear. Bring in a change of clothing, whatever. 
So I go there. It's a movie called We Own the Night. Watch Never the heard of right it. Looks great. Yeah. In this trailer, there's a shot of Ava and Mendez walking down the hallway smoking mm. a cigarate. It's the sexiest fucking thing I've ever seen in my Dude, life. Dude, the opening scene of that I movie is insane. And I'm part of this opening scene. Oh. So the opening scene starts, and um, he's like hooking up with Ava Mendez in this office. That's no, not in that one. And this is where they met. Like, this yeah. is where they found love, was on this movie set. Who? And it, no, Ron, no, no. Ryan Gosling and Ava Mendez were living in New York what? at the same time shooting. She was shooting We on the Night and he was shooting something else and this is when they fell in love. Interesting. They, yeah. Are they still together? Oh yeah. They have what? kids and everything. Yeah. No, right, La La Land yeah. Ryan and the Gosling woman from Final, Ava, uh, Final Fantasy Fast, Fast and Furious, Furious Yes. Too. What? Oh, yeah. That's so beautiful. How did I not know this, Barrett? The best, this is what I pay you to tell me. Spawn by the way, by I, the I'm way, sorry, I thought Ava you were Mendez enough. in Other Guys is the best performance of her I gotta go back and watch that. Other Guys is genius comedy. Come on, Michael Keaton in other guys is genius. You better creep. He, that creep. Desk pop. You have to know yeah. you're don't, doing guys, this. Guys, don't go chasing waterfalls. Guys, okay? hey, don't go chasing Stick waterfalls. to the rivers and the lakes that you're used I, I to. I like the part where he's like, you have to know you're doing this, yeah, right? Like, yeah, you have yeah, to know yeah, this, yeah. right? Yeah. What's a desk pop? Give me that. Okay. <laughs> hey, you better creep. <laughs> creep. He plays Little Riverman. Anyway, so. God, that's good. So, Michael uh, Keaton is a fucking treasure and he's put in everything. I'm glad he's back. Where's Michael Keaton from? Do you know? Michael Keaton? Yeah. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. If you ask, it's got to be. Of course it's. Boom, boom, boom. Guess what? The 412. Sorry. That's what that's uh, what sirens code. are about to be. I don't know orange. what that means. I don't know if it's good or not. That's oh, you're wearing the code. shirt right now. Is My, that four This is the like the main company in Pittsburgh. That's the Pittsburgh. Cool. Yeah. That's yeah. the main company. Oh, I see the little no, Pittsburgh. like the main like T-shirt. Company. What do they call? Is this a diamond? What is this? What do they call this? So that's, Pittsburgh. It's called a hypocycloid, uh, but it's. <laughs> Is that something I'm like, is that a thyroid problem? Like something I have to take medication <laughs> yes. for? Yes. So the, the hypocycloid is a perfect arc in all directions, and that's how you make steel. When you're making steel, you have the yellow, the blue, and the red, and that's in the Steelers logo, and they're all three hypocycloids that are connected. Iron, iron ore, and coke. Not cocaine. Coke. Is what makes steel. That's why they call them the Steelers? Yes. Shut the front door. You didn't know that? Yeah, I thought they right. were like stealing your fucking, stealing no. the game. S-T-E-E-L-E-R. Never looked that close. Steel. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's a cool name. I swear to God. I'm gonna, this is the first time I've come close to punching Nick Scarpino in the face. <laughs> in like the four years that I've known and loved well, this it's just, it's not my, I'm kidding. It's not my fault that uh, the football is a terrible sport and no one should watch it. It's what? not my fault. It's boring. Okay. Listen. Okay. Football is a great sport. Just because we're, uh, we're not from Riverside where there's no athletics at all. Uh, except Ronda Rousey's from Riverside. Oh, Ronda Rousey's from Riverside. Oh, okay. Sorry. Think, Captain Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say John Jones is for Riverside too, but I don't think he's for Riverside. Oh, the Martian Manhunter? So, so here's. He, Macaulay Culkin has a theater day. No, 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 what the fuck is let, me the, let me end the We on the Night thing real quick. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So I get sent there for this extra job, and I walk on set, and we're at this old like club in the Bronx. It's like an old theater, and they're turning it into a club from the 80s or 90s or something, because that's when the We on the Night takes place, sure. right? It's 80s. So I have this, so I have this members only jacket on, nice. right? And you dress it yourself, or is this from costumes? No, I had it from college, so I wore it to the to the set, and I'm in like the first row. And the first thing that they teach you in background is just like try and work your way up towards the camera. Always work because you you're now human. you say they teach you. Is that other extras or is Google. that the director? No, that's what you like. Before I became an extra, I went online and just started reading things about being an extra. Gotcha. Right? And they're like, try and get close to the camera. I was also like sort of in that movie Enchanted in one scene with Amy Adams. Okay, oh, good movie. Okay, good movie. Um, and so the, so I'm like, I see the camera and I'm like, you know, I'm 23 years old and I'm just like, I'm going to work my way towards that camera. I've got this, this members only jacket on and the opening scene uh, opens up with this fight. And so this fight goes and all you hear is like, okay, and cue the girls and two girls get up on top of the bar and take their clothes off. This is at like 9am in the Bronx on a Wednesday mm -hmm. and I'm getting paid to look at naked girls. Yeah. On a bar, Josh McCoo. I'm made like, the good I made holy life. shit! What this is crazy. So then the director, I think it's Brad Gray, is his name, that something like that. Right. If you look it up, I'm on it. He he goes, all right, cut. Uh, let's let's bring that back to one. Uh, bring the girls back down. Uh, and he's on a megaphone. Hey, guy in James the James Gray. James Gray. Thank you. Uh, guy, guy, young guy, members only jacket. Get Stop stroking it. No. <laughs> But put down uh, your jeans are poking out. It's weird now. Uh, get in front. I like that members only. So he puts me in the front of the scene. I love this. Right? And so he's like, all right, let's run that again. Da -da 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 -da. This fight starts breaking out. And, and Joaquin Phoenix walks in. He tries to break up the fight. And he grabs me by like the members only collar. And he and he goes to, like push me in the scene. I was like, whoa! Like I didn't see it coming. And Brad Gray or, or, or James, James Gray. James Gray goes, all right, let's cut. Let's stop that. All right, members only, what'd you say? 
And I said, I said, I said, whoa. And he's like, all right, let's do that again. Say whoa again like that. And he would do it. And and right after the, that scene cuts, the producer comes over. She's like, are you SAG? And I was like, no, I'm not SAG. That's actually my first extra gig. And she was like, all right, well, you need to sign this. You'll get your first SAG waiver because we're going to put your line in the movie. That's awesome. Is it in the movie? It's not in the movie, but I get like a full one, like a second and a half of screen time. With Joaquin, so, your best friend. So, so the We on the your Night comes out. When I first moved to LA. So I left New York after this extra job. Year later, We on the Night comes out. Comes out in theaters. I'm dating this girl. I was like, I was an extra in this movie. We should go see it and see if I'm in it. Uh-huh. So it's like the second date. And we go in where it's big screen and the fight breaks out. I was like, oh, I think this is the scene I'm in. All of a sudden on the big screen, pah, just my face. Wow. And you can see him about to say something. They cut away and they cut my line out. Because if I had kept it, I would have gotten residuals from the movie. Interesting. Sure. So they cut the line. Yeah. And my face pops up and she just goes, <gasps> like she was, she was, and we dated for like three months after that. Like it was, I think she was just you turned got, on by the fact yes, that I was yes. an extra in. Oh wait, is it on Amazon Prime right now? Oh, I got it, dude. I'm watching this. There you it's go. on. It's on. And uh, it's on Amazon Prime free with ads. Here's there he is. Go. There he is. Remember? That's oh me. my Josh god. That's me. How fucking young you are. There it is. Look at you, I'll beautiful. I'll screenshot it and send it over to you, okay? Yeah, there you go. That is amazing. Now, the thing is, I have no idea if We Own the Night was critically well-received or not. I have a feeling it was not. It was mild. But I really <laughs> liked that movie. And I remember really liking it distinctly because it was about brothers. It was about family. Family. And it was about the, the specifically the, bro- the relationship between the brother who was a cop and the Joaquin Phoenix who was kind of a nightclub owner. Kind right. of, kind of not, not really a gangster, but and the dad was like the chief of police. Right. And just the weird shenanigans, and then not shenanigans, but like totally. the, the dynamic- shenanigans they get up to. <laughs> it's a criminal enterprise. But it's not, it yeah. is definitely a violent, violent, violent. It's a violent movie, movie yeah. Uh, but, but I just, I, I, I love the ending of that fucking. Two movie. things that I, the two things that I learned from being on that set, it like in We on the Night was one, Joaquin Phoenix is a absolute madman. In it, a bad way. In in a, in a like method- I would describe you as a mad man too. Yeah, but in a different way. Like he okay. he is so method that you have to call his, him by his character's name, oh. right? Like that's a thing on the call sheet. His I think his name in that movie I forget what his name, but his name on the call sheet is the character's name. It's not Joaquin Phoenix, right? Bobby Green. Bobby Green. So on the call sheet, it's like Bobby Green is at the top, whatever. And two, being up close and personal with Ava Mendez is like sort of how, I w- how close you can talk to her. I don't mean like in a pervy oh, way. She was right there. He's looking at the titties. She's he's an actor. She's sitting. We can't show that. Yeah. Yeah, she's that she's sitting. She's next to me at this one point. Mm-hmm. She's like, she, I would imagine why like they fought the Trojan Wars, like yeah. why Helen of Troy yeah. was such a big oh, deal. Oh yeah, because she's uh, she's beautiful, unbelievable, like show stoppingly, just like draw, like it almost like makes your heart skip a beat. It's kind of like okay, so Barrett, did you show the image by the way, or do you want me to call it up? I it. Uh, still uploading. You do c- control, kind of funny control. That's where I'm sending everything. Uh, it's a, also Slack, Slack, that a Slack. So it might be Slack yeah, yeah, it's a Slack channel. Um, that's I have to imagine that was, was that was intense, was, but. Okay, so here's what I'm th- what I'm getting back to to hustlers. I yes. see what you mean. You take that gasp, like you're about to say whoa. Yeah, you <laughs> see it. You see it. Look at young yeah, Josh McCoy. Look, look at, at all that hair. They're going on up there. God, you had fucking thick hair. Look bro. at all that hair. And now Barrett, cut to me now. Look at it. Look I at mean, it. You're on the screen. Oh God, just no, nothing. No, you still got it, bro. You know what though? I'll tell you this: your arms are way bigger now. Well, I also was, you know. Doing less steroids back then. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody knows <laughs> History that. Channel Wednesdays, 10 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> March 25th. Eating, eating, eating history. Eating Hash steroids. Hashtag eating steroids. steroids. <laughs> Hashtag it eating history. Your okay. producers are going to hate us. Oh, totally. And so is the PR pre- no, no, great. No, the producer going to watch. Listen. <laughs> they, they didn't get this far, Ed. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, they, that's getting so no, no, wait, like, so real quick. So we the were talking about hustlers. eating guy wants us to fucking. No, we don't care what they say. <laughs> okay, that's a good point. Good point. So imagine you're, you get sent to by central casting, like, hey, you're going to go to this movie called Hustlers. Yeah. They don't tell you who the stars are, they just tell you the movie's called Hustler when you get the email. Yeah. The movie's called Hustlers. You have to be in the Bronx at 7 a.m. You get there, you walk into Scores or whatever strip club they were in in Manhattan, and JLo comes out and probably did that strip dance of hers. Yeah, all day. 30 times. No, at least two days. For camera work, at least two days, and at least probably two and a half hours, then a long break, and then two and a half hours, and the next day they got it coverage again. And then if you were some Sorry, of the guys in the front right. row, or you were the like the chosen extra that who's she rubbed her boobs on, you're getting boobs all day, every day. Imagine that's boobs. your first extra job, or you're that's your extra job, and nobody tells you that, and you walk in and that's J Lo. Like, listen, I just saw two random girls who m- might have been Russian prostitutes in New York or worked at Scores, topless. Cool. I get put in We on the Night. You get sent as an extra to scores, and J Lo does a strip tease. She basically does Demi Moore in strip tease. Mm-hmm. That is the gold standard. That's the whole thing. It would definitely be a trip. 
How long did you do your thing? What extra work? Like, no, 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 no. Literally that scene. How long did how, like, was oh, that? Oh, it was a day and a half. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay. Because you have to sound and extras and moving That's things around. A lot around. of logistics on yeah, that. A lot yeah. of logistics. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So was like, if you look at the, if you look at that picture, there's got to be like a hundred extras yeah. on that set right there. Yeah, there's a lot going on. And that was his club, right? That was the club he ran. He owned. Yeah. And ran, yeah. Yeah. A cool. Concept. But anyway, so Macaulay Culkin, right? Sure. On SNL, his dad Here was his, his crazy theater dad. And Lauren was like, I think these are the ones we're going to go with tomorrow. We'll probably delete a couple, but for you know rehearsal, the sketches. His dad and Macaulay Culkin rehearsed those sketches and made him memorize every single line in all of those sketches. Everything that he did. I respect like, that. Listen, when you're out there, you're a performer. This is your job. We are doing this. And that's... And it's like one of those trivia questions. Like, who's the only SNL host to memorize all oh, the really? lines? It's Macaulay Culkin. He, did you watch uh, so, the... Surprising he burned out. Surprising. That his, <laughs> his dad was like Earl Woods of theater. Have you yeah. watched uh, the movies that made us? Yeah, no, no, just the the toys that made us. I haven't watched the movies. movies you gotta, watch, you should watch the movies that made us. I, I'm assuming it's the same producers. Mm. Yeah, um, uh, and they do one of the episodes is about Home Alone, uh. and they talk about how Home Alone was. Uh, I mean, I didn't realize at the time because they did such a good job with it, but it was kind of a low budget movie yeah. that really had no big stars in it. If you think about it, at the time, but one yeah. of the reasons that um, John Hughes was like he wrote it and he specifically wrote it for Macaulay Culkin because he was like I worked with this kid on Uncle Buck and he's like one of the most professional actors I've ever worked with like he just fucking yes. he like came prepared every day nailed yeah. his lines and so they knew that they could make him a whole movie based around him Boom. which is go. crazy so he recommended that he was like Chris Columbus you gotta take a look at this kid because this kid's great Yeah. and then you watch it and you're like for a, and a movie that revolves around such a young actor and to have him be so compelling to watch for an hour and a half is it, it's, a, it's a rarity and a movie like home alone 2 which is basically like the last 20 minutes he murders two people <laughs> for that movie to like i still enjoy the crap out of home alone 2 i don't think I've, i think i've only seen home alone 2 like twice that's outrageous home alone i just over our, our christmas this year yeah there are certain there was like there's a handful of movies that uh the missus and i like watching every year uh, okay. muppet christmas carol okay classic okay. Great. Uh, 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 are overrated. Love Actually, of course. Love Actually, great, great movie. Of course. Yeah. And Home Alone. Home okay. Alone, you, we got it's got we got to go through these. It's almost like we don't want to watch them, but you don't you feel right to. until you've watched. Uh, Die Hard, of Give course. Uh, another one of those. Uh, Die Hard uh, do you need in more the ice? movies that made us. I do. Oh, okay. Why right. don't you go get some ice <laughs> while I tell you about our sponsor? Oh, perfect. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this episode of We Have Cool Friends. Keep going. You can, you can keep going. You can keep going. God, I like crap no, I'm kidding. Right. No, you look great. Shush. And you don't have to really leave. Come here. Daddy. I'm getting some ice. Daddy. Okay. Baby. <laughs> Baby. That's a reference you'll get later. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Well, if they're gold members on Patreon, they will. Where you can get this show ad-free. Speaking of ads, let's talk about our sponsors. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about Indochino. As you know, Kevin and I have Indochino suits, and we love them. Basically, what happens is you get a suit made for you personally. It's your sizes. You get to get things ma monogrammed. You pick uh, the fabric you want. You pick the lining. You pick the pattern. You do all the different stuff. You, they'll write whatever you want in there. That's why mine says Game Over Greggy. You might have seen me wearing mine at the Dice Awards. Um, ladies and gentlemen, with Indochino, it's all about you. You get to choose from hundreds of high-quality suit fabrics to pick the color, pattern, and weight you like best. Then you choose all the personal touches, including your lining, lapel, and monogram. The customizations are all your choice, and there's no extra costs. Your suit is made your exact measurements so you end up with a perfect fit for the shape of your body. Indochino also sells custom shirts, coats, and chinos so you can get a full custom wardrobe. They have showrooms across North America uh, where one of their style guides can take your measurements and walk you through the process. Or you can do it all from home at Indochino.com. Again, no fooling. Kevin and I love our Indochino suits. We wear them all the time. He got married in his. I think I married him in mine. But again, I wore the Dice Awards recently. If you watch... P.S. I love you. XO, XO, episode 10, which we're filming today, and it's out of order. It doesn't make much sense. It's going to be the underrated. I'll be wearing my Indochino suit on that one. You should get yours right now. Get an extra $30 off any purchase of $3.99 or more at Indochino.com when you enter morning at checkout. Plus, shipping is free. Uh, that's Indochino.com, promo code MORNING, for $30 off your total purchase of $3.99 or more. Indochino. High-quality custom suits for an off-the-rack price. Our next sponsor, ladies and gentlemen, it's, of course, me undies. The only underwear I wear. The only underwear Tim wears. Also, the only shirt Tim wears now. And I think the only <laughs> pants he wears. It, it, all he wears is me undies branded things, which I understand and love because I wore the underwear, as you know. I, I got my first pair. They were so soft. I threw away the rest of my underwear more, or, or, and ordered more. And then I also have the loungewear pants that I enjoy quite a bit and some onesies. I saved the onesies for special occasions, Barrett. When I'm doing... What are these special occasions, Greg? When it's a Christmas break, Jen and I both have matching onesies. We'll get into those things there. We'll do that. You can float around there. Uh, 
Imagine your fifth grade self looking into the future and learning that as an adult, you got an undies membership. They would laugh hysterically, but the joke's on them because MeUndies is known for their super soft undies and their flexible fun membership. If you choose to sign up, you'll get perks like site-wide savings, free shipping, and new undies delivered to your door each month. Each month. Go forth, be an adult, and sign up for that undies membership, even if your past self is laughing at you. Me undies, of course, don't just make uh, undies. Like I said, they make the loungewear. Uh, they got the pants. They got the micro modal stuff. So everything's soft, uh, super soft, right, Andy? Amazingly comfortable. Uh, very you soft, there. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you very much, Andy. Uh, and they don't. And they know they're on every podcast, but it's just because they're looking to rule uh, the world with undie domination. Uh, they won't stop until you try them. Me undies has a great offer for my listeners. For any first time purchasers, get fifteen percent off and free shipping. Uh, this is a no brainer, especially because they have a one hundred percent satisfaction guarantee. Uh, to get your fifteen percent off your first pair. Free shipping and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Go to MeUndies.com slash morning. That's MeUndies.com slash morning. Indochino and MeUndies. I'm a huge fan. Indochino yeah. makes an amazing plaid suit. I have one myself. And MeUndies, I'm like, cheers, buddy. Cheers. Healthy porn. Right? I like that. Yep. Keep, yeah, um, keep killing time because I'm, I'm, I'm waiting on some stuff for Nick to send me for the PS I love you. Yeah, come on up here, Maximum Cortez. Everybody joining the crew, Andy Cortez. Thank you, guys. If the, if in, if if me undies made a suit or a jacket, would it, would it be called me ovaries? No, that's a bold. It's over. It's pretty good. It's over. Pretty good. Yeah, you can. Is it under? Can I yeah. shake your hand? Yeah. Can I shake your hand? Like Barrett, nobody cares what you like. All right, Barrett, you haven't seen MacGruber yet. No, let's, take exactly. a, let's take a photo. What do you, do you Who like else has seen MacGruber besides you, Makuga? I, I enjoy MacGruber. Sit the, down, the, maybe. The thing, get comfortable. The thing it takes I was trying to do everything. The thing I was saying in chat is like, um, MacGruber very much the comedy reminds me a lot of Hot Rod. Yes. You know, yes. it's, it's if it's like Hot Rod, I think I'll be into see? it. It's funny because it's dumb. It's yes. funny and it knows it's dumb. Yep. Yeah. You know, and, and that's one one thing I really enjoy about it. It's comedy. not like it's not genius slapstick. Say like a naked gun or an airplane. No, right? no. Like, it's not no. that, uh, and it's not dumb and dumber like off the wall situation. It's like this dumb, stupid comedy that will just make you happy and giggle. Okay. Like it, it's just stupid. It's just really stupid. It's a way to escape from the real world, Thank the dangers you. out there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, you know, Val Kilmer as this ridiculous bad guy. It's it's super funny. And it's it has these little jokes the whole way through. It's a very, very funny comedy. I'm surprised Nick, do Nick doesn't like it. it like, Me too. I'm really hurts. shocked because Nick likes a lot of dumb shit. He yeah. likes Daddy's terrible Home. Taste in every Ninety, I would say like ninety nine percent Daddy of my best friends love that movie. I will never forget being on the. F I think we were on a flight back from RTX maybe mm -hmm. a year ago or two, and I am sitting next to Nick, or you know, there's an aisle seat in between us, and he is like, it's. I have my headphones on and it's kind of quiet in the airplane. I think I'm just listening to a podcast, and I'll just hear. <laughs> <laughs> And it turns out he was watching that Will Ferrell movie where it's him and A.B. Poehler. Oh, The House? The House. I like The House. The House is, house he, is good. He is laughing his ass off yeah. on this play. <laughs> the House is funny. The House so is good. Quiet. House checks out everybody. Again, another dumb comedy. It, it, yeah. Like, I, stop. Again. Where did you come down on Tag? What about okay. Daddy's Home? I like Tag. Tag is Can great. he answer one of the fucking questions before you ask him another? I, Dennis the Menace. God, fuck. That. Okay, Dennis the Menace, great. Tag, great movie. fantastic. All right, good. I, I thought kind of criminally underrated. Yeah, yeah like, absolutely. Eh, Tag was no good. Why? Why was it? And he, it was fun. It was like, fun. the alternate ending situation was, f f like, you know how they, like, try and fooled you with how the ending kind of ended? With, oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, like, yeah. Who grabbing, tagged you? Yeah, who tagged Ghost you? Ghost Dad. Ghost Dad. Uh, actually, not that good. Actually, I can't back ghost at it. Here's the thing: we were just talking about it earlier. Is like you were an aficionado of the Cosby Show. The mm. Macugas loved the Cosby Show. Sure, we loved it, and it's a real baby, shame. Baby, baby, Thank baby, you, baby, baby, baby. It's a shame that this all happened, and I'm not saying because we can't talk about the show. Anymore. I was going to say, it, no, for the record, it's a shame it's that a he's shame a that he's dirt a bag he's human a being, dirt hurt bag people. human being. The least of the problems is the fact that we can't lives. talk about the Cosby Show. He destroyed <laughs> lives. He destroyed. Yeah. It destroyed. The, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a super shame in that fact. But also, like, you can't go around being like, you know what's a great comedy is The Cosby Show. Yeah. yeah because yeah, he's yeah. an absolute trash person. Yeah. And it sucks. Uh, and that has nothing. And it's not because, like, I want to, I'd love to go back and watch The Cosby Show. No. I, I mean, he ruined people's lives. This I did this, is like I, a legit I, thing. It, and it's like, it's not, and again, we're not making light of the situations, no. right? Because it's horrible, and that's the real thing, and thank God that the word got out and all this other stuff. The qualifiers are out there, guys. We, we the, Our audience knows. We're fine. Yeah. I know, and it, but fine. it's more for the History Channel producer yeah. that's watching this, just, oh, sure. just crying, yes. just sobbing that no, history will no, never no, see no, the they love it, they Almost said the other thing. I've got a DVR already. I'm ready to go. Yes. 
I can't, I got YouTube TV. I'm excited. Hashtag Eating Soul. History. As I often do. I was. What's going on with Tim? Tim, come. We got on a microphone. Come on. See what's going on. You're hanging out. But here's what I. Oh, stick with I me for one second. I never get to do shows with Tim. Stick anymore. with me for one second, because here's what almost happened the other day. And not almost, but AKA I. Josh Lucas. It's that thing where I started working from B to Z, and I forgot about A. Where I was sitting at, I was doing the dishes, and I was reminiscing about one Superman Returns and oh, how much yeah. got cut out of that movie. Yeah. And I was like, why doesn't anybody ask for the singer cut? And I was like, oh, right, no, because he's a dirtbag human being, right? He yeah, sucks. Yeah, he's been yeah, washed yeah, out of the yeah, industry yeah, now. You can't yeah, say that. Yeah, yeah, Tim, what's yeah. up? You keep peeking around the door. Oh, Andy was looking for me. No. Cool. No, that was baby, me. Baby, baby, I was looking for you. Baby. What a what a fucking. Scene. And that was the thing is you looked at the Cosby what Show before it? you realized he was a horrible person. Tim ever want to hang out with me on shows anymore? No, he, he doesn't. Does. He does. Well, the problem is that, like, here's the thing, right? He's going he's to have phone calls left and right. I was going to say, he's talking to businessmen. He, what does Tim do he's well Forbes. and kind of funny, yeah. right? And none of that is on camera stuff. Oh. It's all back there stuff. You it's, know all, I mean? it's all, it's all, it's uh, all, the two million here, sure. Three million here, sure. Sure, exactly. Where does that yeah. money go, Josh? I don't know. Yeah, I know, right? That's, That's a great point. I hear those numbers. I don't see, I don't see it. See it. <laughs> I don't just walking around with diamonds, just like, <laughs> draped. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like fucking Goodfellas or whatever. Right? Or, or no. What a movie. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah, Goodfellas. Yeah, 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 when yeah, they yeah, steal yeah. all the money from the yeah, sponsor. Yeah, like, when it, the big Cadillac. It comes in the big I love that car. I love that car. Take it's it off. It's in her name. It's in her name. Take it off. Koda. That's such a What's great, wrong? Oh, great like, And you know that Scorsese, like, he, they were probably probably supposed to cut like a minute before. Yeah. And Scorsese's in the back just going like, yeah. keep going. Keep going. You're killing like, it. Where yeah. do you come down on the impart, uh, depart? No, hold on. Let me try all that again. <laughs> Sorry. They're the starting to ki- it's starting to kick in. Yep. The Irishman. That's yep. where I was going with that one. The latest Scorsese. I, I was talking with my brother about this last night is... I really liked that movie. Wow. I thought it was long. Yeah. I thought it could have been about 45 minutes shorter. But I think the entire movie, the glue of that entire movie is Joe Pesci, which in a lot of movies that you watch kind of isn't Joe Pesci. No, he's usually like comedic relief or that crazy side character. Totally. Like yeah. the glue in Home Alone is Macaulay Culkin. The glue in My Cousin Vinny is Marissa Tomei. The glue kind the of glue, funny Kevin Coelho. Correct. Exactly. The glue in um, in uh, uh, Goodfellas Elmer. is is I, who I think it's it's Ray, uh, Robert De Niro and the glue in sure. Goodfellas, right? The glue in The Irishman is Joe Pesci's performance. It is unbelievable, um, and I, I could have watched every scene with him as that gangster. Every scene with him, I could have watched. I think if you like were to shrink that a little bit, I just don't know if I. He's loved- already really small. He's, it, what's that? He's already really small. I don't know how much you can shrink him, how much more you <laughs> so can go. He's a very small human. Yeah. It's the look that we wanted, Greg. You yeah. guys want to hear my Joe Pesci story? Yeah. Sure. Okay. So, good. My, <laughs> so, my buddies uh, belong to this country club in Los Angeles, and Joe Pesci's a member there. Okay. Yeah. And we do a poker night there every year. And the poker room, like, it, it's like part of the men's grill, and like all the guys, you know, end up there, and you can still smoke inside there because there's like vents and everything. Go ahead, time out. What year is this? Is he still acting or is he no longer acting? This was eight months ago. Gotcha. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, this was like probably right around the time when The Irishman was filming, maybe. Right? Were you filming Eating History on the History Channel? No. Uh, hey, March Joe, 25th. I, I just know, I want to say I know what you're going through because I eat weird shit now on the TV. Ten, yeah, I told, I've been there. 10 p.m. hashtag it. I ate history. a bunch of bubble gum. Yeah. Old bubble gum? No, just, no, a just throughout the years. You know how it doesn't go away, oh, yeah. though, so oh, yeah. it's still sitting somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I swallow it. I swallow all of it. You do? No, I don't. Oh, I don't. I'm kidding. Do not swallow bubble gum. It's okay. real bad for you. Yeah. So we're at this. We're doing our poker night, and we all, like, me and a couple buddies, there's, like, eight of us that do it. We all get dressed up. We have dinner, drinks, and then we go. We retire to this poker room. We hire a dealer. Like, we make it classy. That sounds so cool. It's yeah. really fun. You dress up? Oh, yeah. We yeah. Got, so we're in suits. I, it, I was wearing my Indochino. It's that blue plaid. It's a gorgeous suit. How about that? gorgeous suit and that like their tailored stuff looks so effing good and their stuff is so good remember when i saw you in that blue suit last year i was like that's an indochino isn't my it? indochino suit yeah that's right. you, you know you, you know when you see I need it to get me one for barrett's uh wedding oh yeah you want I to measure you and his birthday don't you worry yeah. and my birthday strip <laughs> don't you worry for your wedding barrett i'm i'm gonna come to the nines my friend nice don't, don't you worry i'm excited I, I i finally like uh we delivered all the groomsmen their like shirts that they're all wearing together Fair. kevin just got his yesterday he's nice. very excited about it is there like a color theme that we should go for uh, just come, okay. on, come as Ultra you are. Violet. So Ultra we're, violet. we're yes. So we're playing cards, right? And Pesci's been around all night, and like he's he's always at this club. He's there every single day. And so we're hanging out, and we're in the card room, and in walks Pesci, and we're all playing cards. And we kind of all look up and stop, and he looks at us. He goes, "What is this? A fucking fashion show?" And he walked by, and I was like. Yes, awesome. you experienced awesome. it. Yes, you got Pesci. Pe- we used Pesci. Pe- Pe- <laughs> so, like three hours later, we're all we left about like you know twelve thirty. We're heading to a uh, gentleman's club in Los Angeles, and we were all in like a, a, we we rented a limo for the night. Like we do it to the night. So we only do it once a year. 
and we're in the we're in the, the driver rolls down the window and it's Pesci driving. Pesci, like, <laughs> what are you fucking doing, baby? <laughs> so we're uh, we're in there, we're in the limo, and it's kind of quiet for a second. And my one buddy goes, "Yo, how about when Pesci walked by?" And we're like, "Wow, that was so effing cool!" Like that was it was so cool. Like to be around Joe Pesci because you're right, he's about this tall. Like he is very short human being. To be around him is like in this presence of a weird greatness. So about three months after that poker night, I'm on the driving range at the course. We were playing golf. And he's on the driving range because he loves golf, but he's not very good at all. And I am just crushing the ball on the... Let's golf someday. I'd love to golf. I love me. golf. Uh, me too. It's my, it's my only hobby Dorks. in this world. So we're, <laughs> we're, I'm on the range and Joe Pesci, <laughs> my, Joe Pesci is walking by me as, as I'm hitting and he goes, Hey, quit fucking showing off! And he... <laughs> And he walked by. And I was like, yes, I got Pesci twice here. This is so effing good. Like, he is he is what it is. He is. We were at this dinner, and it was like a big buffet dinner and a wine tasting night. <laughs> I'm at a Golden Corral. At a Golden Corral. Joe Pesci, like, leave some ribs for me. <laughs> they, they the ran. chocolate thumb's not working. <laughs> I had the marshmallow right friggin' in. I'm so, going to say, uh, and I love you all, none, of you, are, none of you are good at Joe Pesci. Andy, work like, on honestly, it. Honestly, I was just trying to do whatever Josh Yeah, for the record, I'm doing, my, I'm doing Josh's impression. I've never heard Joe Pesci. I watch the movies with captions. <laughs> That's, I forget. I forget you're married to a foreigner. <laughs> Imagine you're sitting down and Jen's like, turn, turn off. off the sound, please. Turn <laughs> off the sound. We need this dubbed in French. So <laughs> I'm like two for two. So we're at this dinner and they run out of risotto at this dinner. And Pesci takes one of those metal spoons at like a buffet. And, like, and he just is going like, whank, whank. I like how the sound effect is in Pesci. <laughs> <laughs> whank, whank. Like, look at him, like, where's the fucking risotto? And the guy comes out, he's like, thank you. And he, like, puts it back in. My buddy's like, do you watch that? Pesci just banged it until I came back with more risotto. <laughs> guy is an effing legend. <laughs> I mean, he just sounds like a high-class asshole, but he's an, but a he's, legend. But it's me. like, here's the thing is, I he think. kind of sounds like Toad. Yeah. When you've hit Joe Pesci no, no. status, Josh's version of him sounds like Tone. Mm -hmm. Joe when Pesci you, sounds nothing Joe Pesci like that. Joe Pesci being an asshole in real life is like Bill Murray being weird in real life. Yes, where you're blessed if he yells at you, yes. calls you a name, and curses totally. at you. Right? You're like, oh, totally. that's that awesome. Yeah. Really cool. it's Joe, please bl yell at my newborn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what is this? A fucking newborn? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it is. It is. It can, is. I, can I ask you this? And you yeah. can say, I don't know. It might end your career if you answer honestly. What's but what do you think of the Irishman? We just talked about it. I loved it. I did. Yeah, you caught up. Great. I really, I really enjoyed the movie. I, I'm telling I, you. I, I know that. Did you watch it finally? It was long. I watched it long ago. Remember, we talked about this. I broke it up in five things. I finished it in the gym. Yeah, it was the first. <laughs> I watched the first season. <laughs> How of the all Irishman. great movies should be yeah. watched. How, and like 900 comedians well, said this the same thing. Movie, it was so. like I loved the first season of The Irishman. I know that Greg and Nick didn't like it, but I, I watched a lot of it with my dad. And there's just something so compelling about Scorsese and even Tarantino writing, where it could be about whatever, and the dialogue is just written so. Really, you like you like the part Fun where Robert De Niro walks out of the room because an obvious reference that had nothing to do with him, he gets his feelings hurt by. I mean, and then Opportunity goes, oh, "You're gonna tell oh, me? You're gonna hit oh, me? You're gonna hit you me? You're gonna hit oh, me?" Oh, oh. And he's like, "I just don't want to be talked to like that." And he's like, "Oh, I, I wasn't talking to you." Part, a totally useless, stupid scene that had nothing to do with anything. What about when Joe Pesci calls him kid, even though he's still clearly old man Robert De Niro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was what killed it for me. It's oh. just like. They, they they make such a big deal about like the first time Pesci meets Nero and he calls him kid and then they continue and it's like the way you've de-aged them is so bland that I don't understand where we What's are in time. To and even when like De Niro went over and fucked that guy up outside of the thing, he old man kicks, kicks and the old man moves and it's like just fucking cast somebody young and say that's young well, De Niro. That's go. what I think is is the shame about this whole thing is we're supposed to go in there and be like, so the de-aging wasn't that bad. Why not just cast a young How do you De Niro? Do it, right? Why didn't you yeah. cast? Yeah, I mean, they had like Bobby Cannavale in it. Yeah. He could have just been the younger of De Niro. Zach totally. The, but they tried yeah. to make his character older than the fucking De Niro totally. character. When it was younger. It's so stupid. Uh, yeah, like, I don't. Who who plays a young Pesci? I don't know, but I'm sure you could get effing you know, somebody. You know what it reminds me you of? Got, you got a young Tommy in Goodfellas. Scorsese, he's already done it. He had the kid in Multiple Goodfellas. times. Have you seen, uh, I don't think Scorsese does, I think maybe it was De Palma, but have you seen uh, A Bronx Tale? There's that, yes. that, that Lilo Brancato. a perfect example. You have a little kid, and then you have the teenager. You have Claude yep. Genot, the teenager. He's great. That We can do the time jumps. It doesn't, like, what Nobody's the fuck? Nobody's going to say, listen, they do it on This Is Us every week. Never every seen week. it. Every week. 
Uh, it's I a watched, new actor. I watched week. yesterday's. <laughs> it's a new actor. Every week. Uh, I watched it yesterday. I, Wait, is this is us still going? Oh yeah. Isn't that the, the one with the guy from Heroes? Yeah, Milo. Milo. Yeah, Milo. I is still, he still now? Here's the thing. You blew my mind today with the Ryan Gosling Ava Mondas. Yeah. Right. I've already tweeted about it. Okay. Is Ava Milo Mendes. still with Hayden Pensieri? Because remember, they were together on Heroes. No, she married a. She is not NHL player. No, no, she married Milo. She married. Is the boxer Milo? It's not. No. Because remember, he was in Rocky Balboa. Klechnikov. No. But I know. I now know why they they cast him simply as Sly's stun. It's that. It's Sly's if son. If you were to watch Heroes, you would have known. You know yeah, I mean? unfortunately. I, did, I watched the first season of Heroes, he, and then I watched the middle season of season two, and I didn't like it. He was in Rocky Ball. Well, that was right? the fucking writer's strike, remember? Yes. Uh, let's put the fucking uh, Skyler. Was that the... Uh, Skyler. Spock, right? Let's put yeah. Spock in a fucking car. Who's from? Pittsburgh, apparently. And have him drive around for fucking 14 episodes. I hated Nobody that. Nobody cared. Yeah. The writer's strike really... That I said it on the last We Have Cool Friends. It ruined my career. I was like... First off, I don't know if you did. We're probably to this point where we're black. Where we're, we were yeah, drinking. Yeah, yeah. What I, were you on before that happened? I I booked this amazing gig on Comedy Central, and they were ready to put me on another one. And then I had met with their casting people to like, and I was writing something, and then the writer strike happened, and they and like my agent dropped me because there was nothing, and I was going to these non-union commercial auditions, and it was like then it was like f- literally four years of where like I couldn't find work anymore. Like the agent that I worked with moved to San Diego because she was like I wasn't. Gonna she do she, it. she, she got into real see. estate. Yeah, no, seriously, that's what people do. They leave yeah. entertainment, they get in real estate. Like that's the California dream. It's, yeah. it's, it's that's they're that, very similar. Uh, being an agent and being a real estate agent, very very similar. Yeah. Oh yeah. Rich. It's like Rock of Ages. That's like the plot line of that movie, and musical apparently. Um, I wouldn't know. I, I, yeah, I, I, I went to that see movie that. Movie did not appeal to me. I at went all. to see that musical at the Pantages with like an ex girlfriend, and it, I, it ended, and I was like, this. I thought I was gonna get to just sing Journey the whole time, but it wasn't a karaoke show. Yeah, we got doomed anyway. in that same thing. Yeah, where it was. It, I had friends in from Missouri. I think it was when I was sick. We had friends in from Missouri, and it was either gonna be uh, Rock of Ages or it was gonna be Daddy's Boy. Yeah, right. Is that the right one? Ad, uh, Andy Sandberg and Adam Sandler. Yes. Right. And, and we all voted Rock of Ages, and Colin was the only one who's like Daddy's Boy. And yeah. when we finished it, we're like, that sucked. He's like, I fucking told you. <laughs> <You're> shutting, <laughs> on, shutting on Dad. Daddy's Boy, underrated too. Uh, Did you see uh, Adam oh, Sandler's speech at the uh, I like that Independent Spirit Awards. No, what? Well, great, well, great it? speech. Did yeah, he, he win? Won, yeah, he won best. He, did he uh, win Uncut actor. Gems? He should have. The Uncut Gems is like I'm only halfway through it. <sighs> okay, we got so two tenths for Jen last night. I She's th- having a tense week. I told you my Uncut Gems story when I came up here in January did you for the first stream? live stream. Told, I told it to you off stream, I think. Okay, because right now I'll tell you where we're at because it's very you know it's tense. You remember yes. everything. KG is trapped in the glass box. <laughs> Yeah, they're trying to get him out. They don't know how to get him out. Things are escalating. It I don't know what's going to happen. Escalates from there. I know. Well, and I know the whole movie. Going. And, well, like everybody who saw it early and came back, or saw it period. I guess not early. Everybody who saw it and came and talked about it on the screencast or whatever it was just like it is two and a half hours or whatever it is of anxiety. Are you and you're riding. Gambler? Do you huh? gamble on sports? No, of course not. Do you gamble on sports? No, I don't like sports. Period. Okay, so this he I gambles know. on life. Yeah, that's true. I'm taking a huge gamble right now, being with you two <laughs> motherfuckers. March 20th. Hammered at 11:45 in the afternoon. It's 165 right now. <laughs> it's 165. Don't what worry time about is it, it. Barrett? It's 110. See, there you go. 165. It, one of two also known as 205. Yeah. So um, that's, uh, that's military time. That's Italian yeah. military time, right? So there. Um, uncut gem. So I'm up at my in-laws, right, sure. which is not far from here. No. And I keep inviting you guys, and nobody ever takes me up. First off, you invited us once, and I had to play video games. And I'm it was sorry. during Thanksgiving. Uh, by the way, we I've invited you about three the separate times. No. I, I, I can go back to the text. It was very clear. No, 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 no. That was the only text invitation. But every time I've come up here, I'm like, would you? I'm here for this. To come oh, in. do you ever notice that I'm always working, though, in the other room, and so I don't really listen? Huh. Wow. And then uh, when I do a show, so I block text out. It. I'll, t- I'll text it. Not with even me. because of the booze. No, not Just even. with me. In yeah, general. just text me. Okay. So. Because um, we thought about it. Yeah. You and you, I'm telling you, you guys would love it. It's awesome. Anyway, so the missus and her mom and her two sisters and and my father in law was not there. He was like hiking in the middle of nowhere with their snow dog, uh, like yes, up in did. like the yes, Grand Tetons or whatever. I went to Udcut Gems by myself. Oh. I've been a diehard sports gambler for like the last 15 years of my life. Yeah. Okay. I I haven't been that uncomfortable in a movie probably since leaving Las Vegas. And that wasn't in like a theater. I was just in leaving Las Vegas watching it. Yeah, yeah. It's an uncomfortable movie. You've you've seen Leaving Las Vegas. Yeah, yeah. yeah, It's It's an uncomfortable movie. You said I was in Leaving Las Vegas watching it. It No, no, no. Sorry. That movie, Uncut Gems, like hurts you to the core. Have you ever bet like big? Oh, yeah. It's called On Tilt. Oh, yeah. Okay. Have you ever lost? Yeah. (laughs) No, never lost. Never. (laughs) Being on tilt like that, but his whole life is on tilt. 
Like, I've been on tilt where it's like, oh, God, if I lose, it'll be a rough couple of months. Right? Wow. You know? But, like, being on tilt where you could lose legitimately everything. Your entire life, yeah. yeah. You know? Like, you, you're betting everything. There's people in this world that bet everything, and there's people that hedge their bets, and there's people that bet nothing. This is what I don't understand about gambling. I understand that it's an addiction, and that it, that, that's very, very difficult, because I have family members that have that suffered from the affliction. And this is why this movie, like, was hard for me to watch as well. But... I just don't understand. You know at a certain point you're going to lose everything. Yes. Why do you do it? Is What is the point? Like, to me, the, I guess the thing that, and, and again, I realize. Do you guys live on adrenaline? Do you guys like the adrenaline rush? Not at all. No, I, I, liked, I, nice, I like to be. I like be, a pontoon boat life. <laughs> I, woke up, I woke up this morning, and this is legitimately how I felt. I was like, I got a ton of work done this past week that I needed to get done, just busy stuff. Yeah. You were coming up. I was very excited about that. I knew we were going to do the show. I woke up this morning, and I thought. Everything is good right now. I'm sure there are more challenges that I get to face, sure. but I work really, 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 really hard for that one moment where I can take a set, like take a moment and go, everything's good. Yeah, I love this peaceful. I get to hang out with my friends. I'm gonna have a good lunch, okay. and then we'll start the whole process over again. I cannot stand the feeling of of having um, that much anxiety that I brought upon myself for fun. That sounds terrible. Okay, it sounds horrible. I have this like overwhelming sense of anxiety if I'm not like moving or if I'm not risking something. Something's like really, missed. yeah. I get that, but like, but but so much of everything we do in general is a huge a, risk. A, a risk anyway, right? We're all in entertainment. This could yeah. all go away tomorrow. Nobody yeah. knows. That's Please don't patreon.com slash kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, March twenty fifth, ten building. p.m. History. Uh, we're building a really big studio, studio, so please keep building. backing yeah. us. Yeah. Ten p.m. Wednesdays. Um, but so for me, like you know, doing stand up doing jujitsu, doing this business, all of those have an element of chaos to them sure. that I, I that I need and I respect and I love. Sure. And I do I do appreciate that you have to have like I've I've recognized that happiness to me is You're a pontoon boat. Pontoon boat. <laughs> exactly. I don't know what that means. Um we do because we like to party. <laughs> Oh, man, Lakes. Like you yeah, we didn't all have the ocean growing up, rich yeah. boy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Over there. Or or a river I'll tell you what, you know, a riverside. Uh, oh, oh here are the three components that make water: H two and an O. Oh, <laughs> they call them they call them the riverside water. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Oh, thank you. I will <laughs> say this: he's the only non-drunk one on this day. I know. Uh, I there's so much. That I I respect that you need the challenge, and I, yeah. and I think any creative person, any any like smart driven person, you you seek out that next challenge, yeah. knowing you don't want it, but once you overcome it, it's going to feel real good, and then you're going to go to the next thing, right? It it to me it boils down to like it. To, to, to conquering fear, knowing only that there's going to be a bigger fear right around the corner, and you kind of start to look forward to that. I think you have to have that if you're going to be running your own business or be in entertainment. Yeah. But I just can't fathom the – like there's so much anxiety in my life already just by running, doing what we do that I, I would not want to throw – gambling on top of that of going like right i have money in the bank right now that might go away that's the worst feeling on the planet for me yeah my, I, my story about gambling is always this uh long ago at a video game event and i won't name names here Vegas. On, yeah, yeah exactly we went there and it was me and a bunch of obviously a billion other video game people sure journalists or press or whatever you want to call them. and one of them was like every time i come here i do one thing i walk up to the roulette table i put down a hundred dollar bill on black or red whatever strikes me and then and, and sometimes i went and i was like that is awesome. And I remember thinking, if I ever have disposable income, because this is when I had like a spreadsheet and I was running, like I have 35 cents. I, yeah, can't, yeah. I can't buy a coffee across right. the street from IG totally. and let alone yeah, put under yeah. like, And I remember the first time I ever went to Vegas where I was I mean, like, you know what? I have I've made it where I have $100 that I could do this sure. one. I went over and I put $100 and it, I put it on black and it spun around and it landed double zero green. And I was like, <gasps> this is terrible. Fuck this. Yeah, I'm never nice. doing this See? again. I walked the only, yeah, the only time I like to gamble is... If we're at a table that's not a tr crazy buy-in, and I'm hanging out with everyone, you and we're just poker. drinking, yeah, okay, blackjack, what, whatever's whatever what I can hang. What would be a crazy buy-in for you? Well, like I mean, if we're playing like ten dollar hands, okay, like ten dollar buy-in, that that to me is not crazy, but that's what I want. Like, I look for the lowest possible buy-in because I don't give a shit about winning money. I just want to drink with the guys and back in the day smoke cigarettes, yeah, and just talk shit and pretend like we're high rollers. So like if you went to a blackjack table and it was a f it, they were $5 men hands, right? Like yeah. you you had about $5 a hand. You yeah. would play that? Oh, I'd play, play that. I'd play that. But if you were there and we were all drinking together, sure. I would yeah. play that. My thing with blackjack is I had a similar experience where I went in to a riverboat in Missouri when I was still living in Missouri. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Let me yeah. tell you a little something about riverboats after you tell me this story. Thank you very much. Yeah. And I went there and I sat down and I I played blackjack in GTA or whatever so I was ready. Sure. And I started doing it and at one point I I hit 
and I still I didn't bust and I was doing great. And the guy next to me got so pissed. Yeah. And he's like, You stole my card. And I'm like, What do you mean? And it was like Riverboat, Missouri. So like the dealer stopped so he aggressive. could explain. And like she would be like, Do you want to hit? And I'd be like, Do I want to hit? And like it was like they were teaching me. Sure. But it was that thing of like, Book I was like, hit. I can never go to Vegas. And so what I did now is when Jen and I go to Vegas, and we've only done this once 14 dices ago or whatever, yeah. we went there and played video blackjack. Uh, where that was cool of playing sure. and I have to worry or interact with any other human being Thank in the you. world. So why do they buy such small ones? That's, also, we why, them do you, out. why do you pour from up here and get all this foam? You've got to lose some of the liquid, right? Because I like, I like, um, I like when the, the carbonation escapes so I can drink it faster. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't that like it sense. to be too bubbly. Let me, like let me, I, I I would that was your riverboat story, the riverboat Ron. <laughs> but no, <laughs> old riverboat <laughs> Ron. I would love to take you guys gambling sometime because it's a lot of fun and I could walk. If you only come, if you only want to bet 100 bucks, I can walk you through how to it's spend an entire not, night with $100. No, I'm, I'm fine $100. with that, but my thing, well, that, my thing with, that it came with gambling is I'm like, I like to pay for experiences. Yes. So if I, if I can make 200 bucks, okay. that's going to be a night. Like you go to Vegas, you're, you're spending a lot of money. Sure. If you're, you're drinking, you're partying, you're doing all this stuff, you're going to spend a couple hundred drinking, bucks. If I can shooting, spend. Snorting. Two hundred dollars and hang out at a table. What's that from? Anybody smoking, drinking, smoking, shooting. Wait, snorting. Bach, don't tell me. Ah, uh, drinking, smoking, shooting. Snorting. It's from uh, Clerks. Bullshit. Black sheep. Black sheep. It's not a fucking Kevin Smith film. No. I would have. <laughs> oh, that's right. When he goes, <laughs> yeah, he, he goes to buy. He goes to buy Yeah. Uh, no, and I'm saying if I can if I can spend that money, hang out with you guys two hours, yep. I, I'll consider and I lose it all. That doesn't bother me. Because I'm gonna go to if I'm gonna go to a bar in Vegas anyway, I'm gonna spend a hundred bucks fucking drinking anyway. Easily. And if so they're that's bringing fine. you drinks, that's the fun. That's the, that can be the fun part about blackjack. And here's here's the other fun Tell me part. The fun about part about blackjack. It, <laughs> the fun part about black. So there's there's two Is types. Blackjack, of, your favorite game? Yeah, that's my game. I like craps. My brother likes craps, and I, I will play with my brother on craps. Craps can be fun. You just gotta learn it. So you know that was what you're a problem. Doing this last dice, is Jen and I were drunk enough where we were ready to risk some money, and yeah. Gio Corsi was going to teach us how to play craps, yeah. but then Gio Corsi stayed too late at dinner and went somewhere else. So Gio Corsi, that's on you, not on that's me. That's on him. Wow. So you fuck is he right dead off. to us now? Huh? Is he dead to us now? No, of course not. We love oh, Gio. Okay. Okay. I mean, he's okay. making Predator Hunting Grounds, which I hope is great. So you know what I mean. There you go. A video game about Predator? Yeah. Oh, dude, you got to come play it. It's because oh. it's. Did you ever play the Friday Thirteenth one? Of course you didn't. No. This is the same idea though, where it's multiplayer, right? So yeah. I, it's four people. Is it virtual reality. It's four people who are like the Schwarzenegger crew. Yeah, yeah. And then one person who's Predator. Yeah. And so the oh, predator. Wait, so when you go to the, the when when it opens up the game opens up and it goes to the menu right where you hit like players whatever you hit start and it does this. And it's just Dutch. pushing too many Son pencils. Pushing too many pencils. See, I got you pushing too many pencils. We got to get Josh uh, back up here for a stream of that. Sure. That okay, but we're going to dress uh, every you. Every tweet this clip at Gio and Jared and Alfana can say, hey, why don't you bring Josh McHugh up? We'll play some Predator Hunting Grounds. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that would be so fun. Um, so. There's a there's a game called Blackjack Switch where you can you, you can find it in pretty much like every major casino in Vegas. It's a two person game. So let's just say it's like a $10 minimum. It's actually a $20 minimum. So you put down 10, I put down 10, okay? And it lays down four cards. But then you can bet on what the dealer is going to have in, a, oh. in this little switch. So it's like a game where we can bet together and win it. Now, the odds are against you, just like every game in the house. But sure. my brother and I won like two grand one day. Wow. And it's a f it's a fun game. I'm telling you, gambling can be fun. And I'm see, not it's the other thing too, where I walk, I'm walking through the thing, and I say, oh man, they got the Superman machine, Christopher Reeve, right? Yes. Ghostbuster machine. I sit down, I put in whatever, ding ding lose ding, and I lose it. I'm like, this fucking sucks. Slots suck. And don't play slots, and don't play video poker because everything's rigged against you in video. Mm. They, you won't. They won't tell you that. They'll say it's a totally random ag liars. algorithm. They're liars. It's a computer. It's a liar. First, uh, the that's the why you can never beat the first Castlevania on Nintendo. Nobody's ever beaten it. I've never met somebody that's beaten it. It's impossible. I'm sure, Barrett beat it. He's Barrett, did you beat? Barrett the first has only read about the first Castlevania Nintendo in history books. Whoa, something about Castlevania and gambling. Did you? Have you ever exactly. beaten the first Castlevania? No. See, it's impossible. It's, uh, it's like it's like Sonic the Hedgehog two, I but, think. Uh, but you know what? I have beat Zelda two, which is very Castlevania like. So I think I could do it. Zelda two is Link, right? The Adventure of Link, yeah. The Adventure of Link, yeah. I think it's when where you where you fight your shadow. Yeah. Well, then you got to figure out how to beat him because like you got to jump early or something, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I beat Zelda Zelda two. The only three video games I've ever beaten in my life are Super Mario Brothers two. Really. Okay. Where you pick up the turnips? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throw them. Super Mario Two, uh, Zelda, Zelda 2. and Link. Those are the only three games I've ever beaten in my life. Wow. And then once video games went 3D, they hurt me. 
Sure. They really sure. hurt me. Sure. It's you got to get back into it, man. You had to make it's a choice. Really do you want to do twenty pull ups or do you want to play video games? You know what I mean? That's, <laughs> that's how it had to be. That's very do you, true. Do you want to yell about McGruber with your buddies <laughs> and drink bourbon, or do you want to, you know? Poor McGruber. March twenty fifth, eating history on history, ten p.m. Will, now let me ask you guys a serious question. Yeah. As friends, will you guys watch this together? Like, will you guys put it on your TV? Will you, will you just like? I, this is an important question I had for you actually, because okay. my YouTube TV is done now. Crisis on Infinite Earths done, oh. so I cancel my subscription. Oh, so you, I have no cable. You're only a Brandon Ralph. So guy. my question is. It's, thank you very much. Mm. Uh, and of course, Smallville. I mean, Tom Welling was well, on it too. Yeah. Erica Durant. Yeah. Um, Wait, was Tom Welling in Crisis on Infinite? It was, yeah. No yeah for like two seconds, but it was, was worth the cult it. girl it was there? worth it. No, 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 of course not. She's in jail. How about she's the love of Miley Kristen Craig? No, she wasn't either. Mm. Uh, but they're doing the Smallville Nights thing where they're touring and doing all sorts of stuff now where you can catch them in it. It doesn't matter. My question is, what is the online plan for this? They have an app. Okay. And then you can get it a couple like days day after, after on Oh, Hulu. perfect. Oh, okay. On Hulu. Can I get on the app a couple of days? Yeah. yeah, I I have Hulu, but I only start Hulu when it's The Handmaid's Tale. So History has an app. It's called History Vault. And you can get it for free like the day after or two days after. So yeah, you can watch it. You can stream it. All the international people that ask me about it, just download the app. If you have an iPhone, I don't know about Android, but I would imagine Android. I mean, it's history. I mean, nobody knows that. Android's so backwards, nobody can understand it. I just don't understand. Like when I text somebody and it's green, I'm very embarrassed. It sucks, man. For them. For them, yeah, in exactly. Oh, I didn't know you didn't know the technology, you know, the light. You know, when you go up on a plane, you fly a lot. I've, I've been a on lot. a plane, yeah, twice. When you get up in the air and it's like, hey, free messaging with uh, iMessage, and you're like, perfect. And then you realize you have a, you have like one friend that has a green one. You're like, I can't do this. Or uh, American who only does T-Mobile. You're like, come on, right just like put me on the wireless for the messaging. All I'm yeah. trying to do is message. You know, see, I'm one of those rare people that you have the second, no, the second I go on a plane, I'm like, I'm not doing any of that. No. I'm reading a book, I'm watching a movie, I'm working on a project, but I'm not, See, I'm, I have no contact with the outside world. I'm kind of with you on that one, mostly because Don't I think it. planes these days, with their selection of movies, mm-hmm. makes life so easy. Like, finally, I get to watch The Goldfinch, which was terrible. Don't no, watch I'm not that watching it. Looks I don't hate. I don't fuck. hate a lot of movies. I really don't. I love most. What do you everything. got against Ansel Elgort or whatever his name is? Ansel Elgort from Baby Driver. Yeah, was I like the Baby Finch. Driver movie is awesome. It's so okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. But, by the way, like. Edgar Wright didn't care for it. When you talk about like a like a breadth of movies, like you have this unbelievable arc of weirdness, right? Mm-hmm. Hot Fuzz, absolutely Great. incredible. Yeah. Shaun of the Dead yeah. Great. might Amazing. be might be a perfect movie. Super fun. It might be perfect. Like yeah. that movie might be perfect. Yeah. Then he has these like like this weird middle ground, and then he comes back with Baby Driver. Yeah, the end of the world was not great. No, that Scott Pilgrim. How do you come to oh, Scott Pilgrim? Oh, I love Scott Pilgrim. Scott, 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 Scott Pilgrim. Pilgrim. Scott Pilgrim. Like, he has this weird like up and down. Kind Wait, did of I lose situation. that? Did he get fired from Scott Pilgrim? He did Scott Pilgrim. He, did he Scott got Pilgrim. fired from Ant Man. Yes. Ant Man. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. And then came in Created Adam McKay, right? Adam McKay did the first Ant Man. No, no, um, oh, it's um, Adam Peyton oh. or something like that. Peyton something. Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning did it. In between Papa John's commercials before the racism stuff. The guy that did, uh, not the guy that did Crash. In between the uh, Before, the before. Peyton, the Peyton Reed. Peyton, Peyton Reed. Reed. Peyton Manning is a quarterback. No, I'm, I'm thinking about I'm thinking about suicide. <laughs> you didn't know that when you said it? I said it knowing I was talking about Indiana Colts, Peyton Manning, slash Denver Broncos, Oops, Peyton Manning. That's good. March 25th, eating history, 10 p.m. Wednesdays. So the one I thing. I think you guys are actually going to really enjoy the show. I promise you. you here's, guys are I want it. the nutshell because you haven't explained on this show yes. what eating history is. Okay, so. If people have made it this far, they don't care. They're going to watch the show regardless. This is my elevator pitch. We should probably like cut and then put this at the beginning so that my producers are at. I, I assure you we will not do that. We will do not that. do that. No. Um, we don't have those kind of resources. I think the people that are listening this far are going to be the fans This is what people watch. came back with in this office. This is how good Hey, you got what you get. wanted. I'm going to taste this. I've never what I love about Nick and I is that we are on the racer's edge, <laughs> where it's we love each other or we fucking hate each other, and we're going to brawl one day. <laughs> we're never going to brawl, because we're the best. You're my bench, I'm your bench. We hung out, just you and me, yeah. was that day after, after the winging the winging it. Winging it pilot coming oh, eventually. Eventually. Um, and we sat at that dive bar by your place yeah. and had a really nice conversation Yeah, we about actually life. talk-talked, because yeah. we never get to talk-talk. Never get to talk-talk. Usually and Nick's there being like, hey, I'm cool too, right? And I'm like, ah, <laughs> I just want people to like me. It's not so bad. And then that kid ran out of that magic shop, scared the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> so we finish f- filming the wing in a pilot. We go to a bar. We're in the neighborhood. Great. All right, cool. Yeah. Then we are walking Greg, to the next Greg bar. Greg orders a couple like beers at one point. And I was like, what are you doing? I love beer. Yeah, I'm That's not a big great. beer guy. I'm a beer guy. 
Yeah. yeah. And then I was just crushing the whiskey. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah. And then my wife showed up. Yep. Amazing. Met it, and met finally got to bar. meet her in real life. She's true. Nurses. She's real. You she's still real. have yet to meet my wife. It's been, we've been friends for years at years. this point. Yes. Now it's like. I forget. What did you have to and do that night where you couldn't come out? Because it was Gia and Joey and, and Tim. Gia and Joey. We went and we had dinner and then we went out to another bar. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it was great. I don't know. Barrett got to meet her and everything. But when we were walking, we walked past a magic shop in the sunset because it was right next to where we. effing terrible. Coke Zero sucks. Diet Coke sucks. We walked by this magic shop that was close to the Korean. Place, asked you. The Korean you know? place we uh, did the wing show at. Yes. And as we crossed it, a little child ran out. Six years old, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> and Josh Lee went, ah! And it was the first time I was like, oh, it's not a bit. The no. whole him being scared is not a bit. Because when, when you watch the us people come to Collider and scare Josh, you're like, we get it. All right, Josh, this is the thing. You're and it was like, oh, no, this is his real yeah. life every day. Yeah, every day, every yeah. single day. Amanda will, like, she'll come home sometimes early and hide places. Oh, that's so that's fucked awesome. up. That's awesome. I love her. And here's how I know... Here's how I know that she might be home is the door is unlocked. I'm like, okay, she might be home. And I'm like, babe, babe. And she'll like jump out, right? Because when I started, uh, well, dating, marrying Jen yeah. and living together, yeah. I would do the same thing. And eventually she was like, you can't do this. If you're going to hide, it has to be obvious. Yeah. So now I hide where it's like a wall and I'll just be half out. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's even scarier. I'll duck below the sink, yes. but my head's there. Yeah. Or I'll hold Portia up so she knows that I'm, she's like, you're hiding. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it's, there's been a couple of times where I've been hiding in the corner of a door and she's caught my eyeball. And I'd be like, she'd be like, stop doing that. It's creepy. But for me, I'd be like, ah. So the one day I was in the shower and I am, um, there's, yeah, I love a backup beep. I think it's, the sexiest thing for sound in the world. So I'm uh, in the shower Something. and was like, I sing in the shower. I'm a big shower singer. I'm like, come on, you know. So I'm like, you know, don't stop believing. And Amanda rips open the curtain and throws a giant pot of hot, like cold water. That's on. awesome. Oh, That's awesome. Water. I love it. Not only did I scream, but I was also freezing. And she's like, ah, I got you. So like two days later, I try and like get her in the shower. Oh. I step one step into the shower. She opens the curtain. She goes, don't even fucking try it. And I was like, you're good. You're better than me. You're better yeah. than me. So we went to that Halloween Horror Nights, right? Yeah. Which is absolutely terrifying. Do you know, do you know why not? it's terrifying? Wait, wait, wait. No, at Universal. Universal, okay. Okay. Not only do they That's have... That's not Scary Farm, excuse me. Not only do they have uh, Eating History, March 25th, 10 p.m., Wednesdays, um, is three channel. Um, not only do they have the, the mazes, but when you're walking around Universal... There are people with like chainsaws and they'll just fall. Did you just rip the tag off your shirt? Yeah. It's a weird thing where this shirt's never done it, but this tag has popped up several times. So I say, Danny Boom. O'Dwyer, take your tag back. I don't need it. Boom. That was well done. It's a great shirt. Great shirt. You're walking around Universal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have the, but to, to clarify, they have the chainsaws without the chain. No chain. So you hear it and they come Rain. at you Rain. and you, Rain. They're like, and they like get you, but there's no chain in it. So there's nothing actually yeah. cutting. At one point, it's terrifying. They, uh, we did, we, they finally made me go. Like Universal gave us a VIP treatment. It was really, really nice. They were awesome. They paid for drinks. It was really cool because there was no way I was going in there sober. Did they have there the zombies no that skid around on the, on the yes. knee plates or yeah. the, the knee pads? Yeah. Those are terrifying. Terrifying. Yeah. There's one part where you walk under like a hallway and there, there are people that aren't like dressed. And whatever, and then all of a sudden they just like pull off their face. Oh wow! Like it is, it is terrifying. It is terrifying. I love so, it. Let's go. This so fun. There's this one where you walk in this outdoor maze, and every like, there's trees and like a forest, and like all of a sudden like the forest will just walk into you, right? And this this tree walks into me, and instead of picking up the tree and like attacking the tree, I just pick up the girl next to me. And it was like a 12 year old girl, <laughs> and I. Oh, sorry. There was a 12-year-old girl with her parents, and I just picked her up, and I just ran with her. That's and her dad good, goes, dude. stop! And they flipped on the lights, because they thought I was trying to kidnap well, a 12-year-old. Well, yeah, because you abducted a child. I yeah. abducted a child. You committed a But it was the offense. only thing I could do to, like, save myself. Like, I'm, you know when they tell you at the beginning of a flight, they're like, hey, the oxygen mask will drop down. Make sure you put yours on your first. No, I'm putting the first one on the person because I'm freaking out and I want to make sure they're Oh, so you're okay. trying to save the kid. I was trying to save that person. What did the, it's, when, so when the lights come flight. on, it's talk to me flight. a little bit about the conversations that happened after the oh, lights come on. The security swarmed. It was like Vegas. And they were like, what are you doing with that girl? And they and they come in, they're like, no, no, no. The universal people came. They're like, no, 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 no. He's fine. It's a, It's just, a, you know, we're, we're doing the VIP thing. He gets really scared and he grabs people. He, he didn't know who was around him and he just grabbed this girl. They're like, too bad. <laughs> they just tased me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Have you ever been tased? 
No. No. Yeah, me neither. That's the kind of shit, like, no, we hang out a lot with, you know, the Rooster Teeth folks, right? Yeah. And I see their extra, like, our extra life's fun, let's drink, oh, you gotta, we're white claw hands, maybe you get shocked by thing. Like, when we went and did Achievement Hunter Live, they're like, we're gonna do this thing where you sit in the, and if you get it wrong, it hits you in the nuts, you wanna do it? I'm like, no. <laughs> Fuck no. And I watch them all get tased. I'm like, why? What I are you don't doing? Get now, granted, tased. they have millions of subscribers. And yeah, like, they, they're doing it right. <laughs> well, hey, we're doing what we yeah. want to do and have a great no, time. No, this is Achievement Hunter. This is a part of Rooster Teeth. Oh, okay. Got it. The, then the lesbian. Yeah. yeah. They're the Rooster guys. Rooster Teeth that, is awesome. They're amazing. No, the Dobre brothers are a different beast altogether. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, we can talk about them off air. Yeah. But the, if, you, if you're if you not subscribed to the Dobre brothers. What is it? The Doberry brothers? The Dobre. Is it like a porn thing? No, they're four very talented young men who make um, kind of slice of life videos where they backflip and they're brothers. Oh, they're, and, that's Nick, uh, that's a Dobry brother. Oh man, if you could have given me 13,000 tries, I would not have spelled Dobries that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know it's Marcus and his brothers, and they just they go out there and Marcus, they're living in Maryland. Aurelius, Decimus, All right, so hold on, Decimus. real quick, let's do a full stop because I am unsure. <laughs> Is this a joke? Yes, no. <laughs> I hate these fucking kids. No, 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 no. You get, showed get, me that thing, and I was like, wait, is this a KFAF joke I don't know about? Where Bear, this is like a, a go, to the, go to YouTube.com slash Dobre Brothers or whatever the fuck it is and show Greg at least one of them. I mean, can this you is, imagine it like back in the day? Greg, thing. do you have a brother? I should have a No, I, I don't hate your these sister, kids. Right? I'm just jealous huh? of these kids. You and his sister? No. She was stillbirth. Oh, I'm No, I'm kidding. I got nobody. I got nobody. Don't worry about that. Christ, Greg. What? If you can't laugh about life, can you not laugh about death? What if I tore Do my face off right now? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Just you. Only yeah, time. it's me. Please. Okay. Look at this. You think my parents popped this out? They're like, let's do another. <laughs> These are my brothers At right my here. wedding, my mom said at our rehearsal dinner, she goes, it's so great to have everybody here. I love uh, Amanda, and I love everybody here, and I love my son, Josh. But I want everybody to know in this room that if I had had Josh first, he would have been an only child. Hope you guys enjoy the wedding. I love you all so much. Wow. <laughs> Drop the mic. Damn. Nice. Good job. Damn. Good job. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Barry, can you bring this up? Let's just take a look at the banner here. Go back up. Scroll back up, please. Yeah. Uh, what, what, these are the Dobre brothers. There's four New of them. New Friday's videos they Saturday. They're all jacked. What all they do is a uh, backflip? No, back they flips. do fun videos where they... So they're uh, like, there's an one where cup, like an 80s cup? Uh, like an 80s big, big gulp? An 80s cu- oh, like okay. an 80s okay. big gulp. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Um, like, they just do lots hey, of stuff. Hey, Dobre's, we're the guys that dunk the basketball. Let's go to let's go to their, their top videos I'm their top so videos lost at what's real and fake right now. Yeah, me too. Scroll down. So we can look at, uh, let's look at the one where it's, uh, oh. My girlfriend was not ready for this prank. Let's do that one. So they prank their girlfriends a lot. Holy shit. And I'll they tell you what, abuse. they don't, the girlfriends, man, they just don't know this is happening. Where do they live? Oh, Maryland. Wait. Yeah, this is what you can afford on YouTube salaries in Maryland. Yo. So right now you, uh, you Are get, we going to get claimed for this? This is going to ruin everything. We're having a great episode 100%. right now. Do we need to have it where banned in all countries because of the fucking Doughberry brothers? <laughs> Doughberries. I don't care enough anymore. I don't they backflip, they're, great. I yeah, they're He's they're just upset. They're gonna be your new. So it's just like Mr. a Rocket. prank channel with hot dudes. Well, if, if them getting six hundred thousand views on their video pisses you off, me and Josh getting more views than any KFA app. Let's check in. And I'll use I'll use the studio app because that Greg and Josh should host. Because you do this thing and you refresh and it shows you like right yeah oh man look at that seventeen point seven. Tell you what, and that's up over the usual in this time period. You usually get between eight point three you guys are and eleven point six. But we got you guys are very fun to watch. I, I want to think that it's who, because of me, but it's clearly because of Greg. But and like Brian okay. Parker in the comments says, this has to be in the top five of t- top five to ten best episodes. Brilliant stuff. Yeah, great. See again, mm-hmm. I I give you guys some of the credit for making this episode so great. I give myself it, the rest of the credit for putting you guys on because so I'm Greg, the producer. Get your microphone. Don't forget your microphone. Don't forget your microphone. K F A F Greg and Josh at host. K-F-A-F, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. Greg and Josh at host. Yeah. Andy, See. retire, bitch. <laughs> That's what they say on the other side. You know what I mean? They're just like, get him. Get him. Um, Josh, do you want a friend zone question? Because you have a whole bunch. Sure. Let's do it. If you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, you can write into the friend zone, patreon.com slash kinda funny. I'm going to give you options, okay? because we've been going a long time, and we're way into the day, and there's a billion other shows that are supposed oh, to be filming no. right now. Oh, we're having a great time. Tim's pissed, but Tim's just always pissed. You know what I mean? Remember? Should we, what time are we supposed to close? Oh, at 1 o'clock is the next show. This we're is a 45-minute minutes, minute long yeah, show. Don't worry about it. So. I mean, well, I, we've so never, ever five. once hit a cool friends that is uh, then. So here's what I'm going to say. You can have a food memory question, okay. a bad boys question, um, alcohol question. Mm. Or... Let's do food, alcohol, bad boys. Oh, so you can do them all. Okay. All of them. Uh, Brandon writes in and says, question for Josh McCuga. What is your favorite food memory and why? 
Okay, so um, if this involves you eating something off of Ava Mendez, I'm no, gonna no, fucking no, 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 no. shit. So we like on the show, we've eaten some really cool old stuff. But my favorite thing on the planet. My favorite is, thing is too that I asked you to nutshell your show and you never have. Doesn't so matter. people still well, don't nutshell. understand what the show is. Don't care. So it's like it's a combination of bizarre foods, parts unknown, and fear factor. Right, because we're telling you the history of pop culture food items, food items that are forgotten, food items that may may no longer exist. We're giving you the history, and then we're trying like old versions of them. So there's like, so what does that mean? So like, oh, this is the original Twinkie recipe. Somebody's remaking that for you, or are you finding an original no, Twinkie from nineteen? 19- finding an original Twinkie. Oh, Jesus, Even yeah. we didn't do Twinkies because we feel like that has been done, played out to yeah. death, right? But we have like first generation Wheaties. We have first generation Pringles. Oh, those can't be good. Right? We have um, like 100 year old Civil War hardtack. That sounds great. I love hardtack. Yeah. It's, what it, the it's wild. Hardtack. Oh, you it's never a, had hardtack? It's like, it's a, a, it's a soldier. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about either. You know what hardtack is. <laughs> you're such a dick. I was like, I mean, he's from the South. He might get it. Um, it's, <laughs> uh, it's, it's a wild adventure. It's like you learn a lot and you watch a really fun interchange between. Should you eat this or shouldn't you? Because let's be honest, botulism is what comes on old food. Yeah. Like that's, and botulism is the strongest biotoxin we have on the planet. You can't smell it. You can't taste it. You can't, uh, uh, can't smell it. See you can't it. see it. You can't taste it. Right. It's like, you know, whatever. You can't eat that. So we have a toxicologist on set. We have a medic on set. And they're like, hey, you can't eat that. And they're like, yeah, you'll be fine. Or mm, now, maybe. how much dietary distress did you experience during this show? The, there's been there was a couple mornings where I was like, I'm gonna be late. Like I'm gonna be late. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. And clean like, up on Al. That we've too. had we had multiple times where they were like basically uh, putting fluids in us to flush us. Jesus. Like it's it's a pretty cool show. It's really wild. That doesn't sound pretty cool. That sounds no, but horrifying. It's, sounds amazing. It's you're 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 the only way to really tell history through food is to try and taste it to see what holds up. And so my favorite snack food all time is the Pringle. And we try oh, sure. to we how try old to, is the Pringle? The Pringles from the uh, mid seventies. Okay. So the crazy thing is, is they wanted to create a chip that didn't flake, that was able to like keep, and they didn't put in a bag because they were tired of the crumbs at the bottom. Yeah. So Pringles developed the shape. And they developed what they wanted it to look like and how they were going to stack it. And it took them 10 years to figure out the flavor. So many different well recipes. Worth it. Well worth it. And so we try a first generation Pringle. I'm not going to tell you guys how it, how it tasted, but you're going to see it on the show. I was going to say you have to tune in. You have to tune March in. March 25th, 10 p.m., the Wednesdays History Channel. on the History. And uh, 25 years of History Channel being around. History is wow. it's awesome. They've been really, really cool. It's been kind of like a like this amazing, again, like an amazing kind of a thing. Because I come from a family of collectors, right? My dad was a collector. My uncles were collectors. We've tried old foods. My dad used to have all kinds of old uh, bottles of Jim Beam in our house. Like oh, wow. Decanters. Oh, nice, nice, nice. And like a couple high school parties like I opened. Oh, that's couple. bad news, Bears. Did I your dad s- ever find out? Oh, yeah. And he was a real first of all. Uh, Did you I, do the thing where you're filling them back with water? Uh, yeah. Did you do like the dry erase marker? Yes, this is yeah, the line. Yeah. Yeah. But they have these old seals, like old liquor bottles. Oh, sure. Yeah, they're, they're bonded. Yeah, they're bonded. So you can tell by certain uh, bottles wh- when they were bonded. So like Jim Beam didn't start doing these specialty decanters to like the l- late 50s, early 60s. And then we've tried a bunch of them. And so when I go into places now, and and this has been the, the my parents collected old uh, tins, right? Sure. So cookie tins. Um, you know, any kind of like collector tin, my parents did, they got those and it was like part of our house. My mom was like a colonial American collector and my dad collects hats and my dad collects soldiers. And so, and my human beings. Yeah, total human beings. Like they're in our basement. Ah, so you're team Delta force. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm chained. (laughs) Um, so this show kind of like came along perfectly because I was able to speak on a lot of this stuff. And, um, I, my, my, Co-host Old Smokey, really good dude. Yeah, he's an awesome dude. Dude, when when Old Smokey pops up in the trailer and you're like Old Smokey, I'm like, yeah, that's Old yeah, Smokey. That's, right. old, that's Smokey. old Smokey, all right. And he's a legendary guy. He's, he's from West Virginia, just a really really good dude. And we've had an awesome time shooting the show. I I honestly like, I think that everybody's gonna love the show. I really do. It's really it's super fun. It. It's super fun. Uh, Barrett, can you th- can we watch the trailer? Will that yeah. get us clean? Will no, that fuck no, everything no. up for us? No. no. Can you bring you up the trailer and the show? We'll know. toss that up. Josh we'll has no happening. idea if this. I will make sure. Happening. I have the direct road to the History Channel. I'll make sure this is not. You know, Mr. Watch. History Channel. Huh? Uh, your History. your uh, your story about drinking your dad's really amazing, expensive old booze reminds yeah. me of the time that my brother and I 
who started smoking way too young, decided that it would be a great idea. My dad had a pack of cigarettes unopened from Air Force oh. One. And my brother, from my grandfather, my grandfather oh, had gosh. ridden on Air Force One and didn't smoke, but decided I'm going to take, as a keepsake, they gave you cigarettes. Yeah. So he took a pack. And when my brother and I became smokers, we thought it, my dad would never notice the if, we, if we smoked one of them. And then, of course, we were smokers and addicted to smoking. So slowly but surely we smoked them all. And then my dad's like, what was your plan here? Like, yeah. did you think I wasn't going to notice that the fucking unopened pack of mar like soft pack of Marlboro Lights is gone? Gone. And we were like, ooh. Whoops. Go, 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 go. It was bad. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here is the eating history promo. I'm Josh. And I'm Old Smokey. We're on a mission to track down the rarest, strangest, most God, iconic foods that from history and eat them. We'll put it all on the line to uncover which foods have stood the test of time and which should have stayed. That is the disgusting. Box. That thing you drop out of the mold, I don't know what that is. That is like disgusting. Jellied moose fast. nose. When cool. You eat something that is 30, 40, 50, 60 years old. It's the only way you can legitimately taste history. Eating history. How many times did you? How many times did you nail that in one? You know what I mean? You nailed that in one. Yeah? Are you kidding me? Josh is a You got one outside. I will say this when you guys did uh, what we shot so far for Winging It. You both are very, very, very good at what you do. That's why we should do shows again. And I really, I appreciate that. one show because I've worked with some Wait. fucking hacks in the past. <laughs> yeah. And when I'm holding the camera and, they, and it's two, three, or four takes, I just put Tim. the camera down. I walk away. I'm not gonna say names. Tim. Tim. Oh, Kevin. dude, let me get one more of those. Did you get my Jordans in it, dude? Again, I don't like looking at the chat, but I want to point out that Panzerg Two says Old Smokey doesn't look that old. <laughs> <laughs> Here's That's the funny. So he, they call him Old Smokey because he's been collecting vintage tobacco for a long, long time. Oh. That's cool. And the crazy thing is, back in like World War II days, and like up until the Vietnam War, they put cigarettes in military rations. Of so course. if you have like old cigarettes from military rations, like old Lucky Strikes, old Benson and Hedges. Old, uh, what was the other one? I've tried some old cigarettes, and they're very impressive. Like, it's kind of funny. That tobacco cannot be good stuff. It's not. It's got to be super but dry. It's, but it's sweet. It's kind of sweet. That good. was back in the day when they were like, you are going to war. This is a fucking real yeah. war. Listen, you're not coming back. So yeah, we're just going to give you whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> like, is this smoking yeah, bad for you? Yeah, so it's a bullet. So just smoke the cigarettes and just get what little Enjoy pleasure them. you can That's out why, of life What do you right think, now? like, World War II, they were always just getting cigarettes? So also, it's just cool. Yeah. It is also. No, wait, no, no. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Guys, that's no. our cool friend, Josh McCuga. Check out Eating History on the History Channel Are Wednesday, we March 25th, 10 p.m. You can get it on that History app or Hulu after that. Josh, thank you so much for coming by. I love you guys. Sorry that you leaving Killed Collider, but I'm glad to see your career is doing well. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just sucks that that's how it had to be because there was a lot of good people. I was people wondering if we were going to broach that at all. We'll just take I was here. going to, but then we just ranted about fucking bad boys forever. Yeah, Macaulay Culkin. Yeah, Macaulay Culkin stories and shit like that. <laughs> uh, next gone for another hour and a half. Easy. Well, no, we easily could do the entire show, this thing, but there's a million things going on today. Uh, remember, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have cool friends. It's available everywhere. YouTube.com slash kind of funny. Roosterteeth.com. Podcast services around the globe. Go subscribe, like, share, leave a review, do all that jazz. Uh, next week, we will be back Thursday, March 5th with Pete Hines. That's a pre-recorded episode, so you, do, you have no homework to do in terms of turning in anything. But until next time, no. Nick? It's been our pleasure to serve you. Fucking he crushed it, guys.